Come to order. Will the clerk please call the roll? Jonathan Bruns. Linka Wright. Here. BJ Fatum. Sylvia Alvarez. Freddie Sidbury. Here. Andrew Dillison. Present. Ramon Martinez. Here. Anadina Cardenas. Here. Gloria Collins. Here. Steve Berrigan. Here. Thank you. You have a quorum. Thank you. Um, we do have a public hearing today, uh, this evening on the um, draft maps. And so we do have interpreter services available for the public. Um, and we have a video um, to share, um, informing you on how you can um, listen to those interpretations. Hola y bienvenidos a esta reunión. Para acceder a la función de interpretación, haga clic en el icono de globo en la parte inferior de la ventana de Zoom y selecciona el idioma que desea. Para escuchar claramente el audio de interpretación, le recomendamos que también seleccione la opción para silenciar el audio original, que es la opción más baja en el menú después de hacer clic en el icono del globo. Xin chào và cảm ơn quý vị đã tham dự buổi họp ngày hôm nay. Để truy cập vào phần thông dịch của ứng dụng Zoom, xin nhấn vào biểu tượng hình quả địa cầu ở phía dưới của màn hình và chọn ngôn ngữ theo ý muốn của quý vị. Để nghe rõ lời phiên dịch, chúng tôi khuyến khích quý vị chọn chức năng tắt âm thanh góc nằm ở phía cuối trong phần tùy chọn của biểu tượng quả địa cầu. Okay, is there a motion to approve the orders of the day? I will make the motion. I will second. Thank you. Will the clerk uh, please call the roll? Uh, Jonathan Bruns, Linka Wright, aye. BJ Fatum, Sylvia Alvarez, here. Oh, would you vote to approve the orders of the day? Sylvia, we're voting to approve the orders of the day. Would you like to vote yes? Yes. Okay, thank you. Freddie Sidbury, aye. Andrew Dillison, Aye. Ramon Martinez. Aye. Anadina Cardenas. Aye. Gloria Collins. Yes. Dee Berrigan. Yes. Thank you. That motion passes. Thank you. Um, items two and three, there are no items listed on the public record or consent calendar, so we can move on to item four, reports and information. Um, so this is the fourth meeting on um, 
for the redistricting commission regarding the draft maps. And we have one more notice meeting on the draft maps and we'll talk later tonight about uh, the possibility of adding um, some additional meetings before our report and recommendations to the council are due on November 14th. Um, so far we have eight draft maps uh, by our uh, consultant redistricting partners that have been drafted based on um, the new census data, community of interest testimony, as well as um, the commission suggestions for changes. Last week, we also had three presentations from the public on their um, own proposed maps, and we continue to get submittals of draft maps through the public mapping software Districtor. Um, last week, uh, we worked with uh, redistricting partners, our consultants, uh, to try and move some lines around in the proposed draft maps C3 and C4, and um, we gave the consultant some suggestions, um, which he will um, review uh, during his presentation um, later today. And I just um, want to take a moment to thank the community and members of the public for their attendance today for submitting draft maps and community of interest testimony as well as written public comment. We've received many letters from the public um, in the last several weeks, including for this meeting, um, which touch on process, concerns about district lines, and um, we want to uh, let the public know that the commission is receiving them and reading them. Um, and with that, I'll turn it over um, to the clerk for her report. Hi, I have a quick presentation. Um, I was asked last week to um, to talk a little bit about the summary, a, a little bit about the outreach that we did um, so far with the redistricting commission. And so um, meetings of the redistricting commission were held the third Thursday of the month, starting from March through September. Um, many of the, and we also met in February, but not on the third Thursday. Um, February is when we established the regular meeting time. And those meetings, those Thursday meetings were all educational. Um, redistricting partners, our consultant, came in and talked about the laws, the, the best practices of redistricting. We had um, speakers from a variety of organizations come and talk about the importance of redistricting and what we need to look at and look for. Um, so those were very interesting. All of the videos for every previous meeting is available on YouTube. Um, on the redistricting playlist. So you can watch through every meeting, including all of the public hearings that we have for all the different districts. Um, we held community of interest public hearings in every district um, from August 7th through September 11th. And actually this is this cuts off when I, when I did it. Um, it's actually went through September 21st was the, the final, um, I think the final, meetings, but we held them in every district. Um, notices for all of the communities of interest public hearings were sent in English, Spanish, and Vietnamese to the neighborhood organization list that we received from the mayor's office. So it's um, neighborhood organizations in every district, and then also the community-based organizations that we deal with at the city. Notices in English, Spanish, and Vietnamese were also posted on the city of San Jose's next door. Um, targeting each district one to two weeks prior to the public hearings. Um, and then notices in um, English, Spanish, and Vietnamese were also posted on the City of San Jose's Facebook page in the same time frame. Um, and those were not city clerk pages, they were the city pages because they have the biggest outreach. Um, they have the, the largest number of followers. Um, and next door, you know, a lot of neighborhood organizations are also, of course, on next door. So they would have seen the notice on next door as well. Uh, do you guys have any questions about that? I mean, I know you guys were at every single one of those hearings, so we, we did have a lot of them. Um, and they were held over the summer. Oh, let me put my video on, sorry. They were held over the summer. Um, and uh, 10 years ago in 2010, our communities of interest public hearings did not have a, a ton of participation. Um, I think when people are happy with their council districts, 
they they probably aren't paying attention to that as much, especially in the summer. Um, but we did have members of the public attend via Zoom and in person at those particular public hearings. And Lenka? Yeah, thank you so much, Tony, our city clerk. Really appreciate you giving just an overview as to the outreach uh, that was conducted with the public hearings. And I think the commission had a feeling that once we started seeing what the potential district lines would be, that that's when there would be heightened public interest, as we've been seeing with more emails coming in and more public comments being made uh, during our meetings, which are now being held weekly. So I just wanted to thank you for giving that summary, because I know that has been coming up with some questions from the public. Okay, thank you. Um, we will now um, open this report section um, for public comment. Um, we do ask that um, you, we limit public comment at this time to address this report section. Um, if you would like to address the report section, please um, raise your hand and the uh, clerk will call on you. Do we have any members who wish to speak? Um, yeah, I have several hands up. Blair Beekman. Hi, thank you. Uh, thanks a lot for this meeting tonight. I've been looking forward to it. Um, I, I'm really uh, hopeful about the ideas of, uh, I like the East-West ideas of districting and the ideas of how to better address equity overall. Um, good luck how I think all the maps can be talked about and and adjustments be made. Um, I personally feel 3C is, is the good example and, and the unity Wait, example. Blair, Blair this sorry, this is, is what Tony. What we're talking we're, about. Yeah, we're talk, we'll be talking about the draft maps next. Right now we're talking about the report given by Enadina and by me. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I will wait then. Thank you. Tam Wynn. Oh, sorry, he put his hand down. Maria. Hi, I, I was also um, going to speak in regard to the redistricting. It's, I will wait. Thank you. Okay. Todd Williams. Hi, good evening. Um, I wanted to say that even though, though there may have been some public outreach, it didn't reach the public. So at least in my neighborhood association, we were not aware of redistricting at all until we started recently catching wind of it. Um, I'd also think we need to address early on, are you adding additional meetings? Because when you look at the city webpage, it seems like this is it, this is the last meeting. And number three, as always, I'm a true believer in openness and not allowing the public to see how many and the actual list of attendees is a form of censorship. Thank you. Rosa Vargas. Rosa? Okay, Rachel Daniels. Hi, I just have a quick question about um, what you just presented. Can you state again where um, we can find of the previous the meetings, the community of interest meetings and the meeting held over the summer? Yeah, those are all available on YouTube, on the City of San Jose's um, YouTube channel. There are is a redistricting commission playlist. So that's where you can find um, all of the redistricting um, meetings that we have held. Thank you very much. I do believe one, the public hearing for District 10, the, the video file was corrupted. And I don't think that one's available for that reason. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Rosa Vargas. Rosa, go ahead. I 
I see you're unmuted, but I can't hear you. Hello. Hello. Uh, mi nombre es Rosa Vargas. Soy una trabajadora de comida rápida. De San José, California. Y líder en la lucha por, por 15 y un sindicato. Vivo aquí en San José. Vecindario en el que viven. El que vivo. Can you hold on yo just a second? Mapa de una unidad. Can you hold on just a yo second? I want to remind people una... to switch. El mapa, I would like el to mapa. remind people to hear the translation to go to the Spanish channel, click the interpretation button and go to Spanish. And um, Rosa will have four minutes to speak. I only have a two minute timer, so I'll run it twice. Okay, go ahead. Yo apoyo el mapa de unidad porque el mapa de unidad promueve, promueve la equidad, seguridad, que las coaliciones étnicas tengan en veto. Igualitario en sus distritos, sus distritos y compl 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 complicaciones igualitarios en sus en sus tritos. y complicón y complicaciones e, y mapas justos y la ley ley de derechos esta, estándares de California por ejemplo en poner a la, a la comunidad de gente negra que ya ha sido de, devastada por el de, por el desplazamiento y garantiza una mejor representación demuestra populaciones asiáticos y latinos un distrito más representativo para los trabajadores significan oportunidades de apoyo para nuestras comunidades. Muchas gracias. Okay, I would like to remind people that this is for comment just on Um, it's it's just for comments on the, what and what the city clerk reported on. Um, and so if you have comments about the maps, please hold that for the next item. Um, Eddie Correa. Eddie. Hey. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, so with regards to outreach, um, as you stated, um, a lot of this outreach was done prior to um, proposed new districts. And so uh, the reality is people will not show up until they understand what the proposals um, will look like and how they could affect you. So there really is an interest to show up until you know how it's going to affect you. And to say that um, you did a lot of outreach, well, it really isn't outreach until you reach out to the individuals once you've shared with them what the proposed redistricting is gonna be. And so I highly encourage us that if we really want to hear um, our, our individual citizens is to really have a lot more outreach once proposals have been submitted so that you can get true feedback of what uh, potential modifications should be done because it might have negative impact or have some types of issues the way you're doing uh, redistricting. 
sometimes going by uh, a line just in the middle of, of, of the street could have some, sim some serious consequences and maybe you should move the line over one street to not divide um, certain communities. So that's just my, my input. Um, I think it's, it's great that you're having these meetings, but um, to, to say that you did a lot of outreach um, prior and consider that outreach, meaningful outreach, is probably not um, really truthful to some effect. Thank you. Gabriela Zalea. Yes, hello. Thank you for having me today. Um, hopefully you can hear me okay. Hear yes, me? You can. Yes. So I'm in the Willow Glen community and I do want to say that, you know, we are a community of interest and we should can be considered that and safeguard the Willow Glen community and keep it unified. Um, redistricting to us means a lot of different things, especially where we're located on Almaden Road. We're facing a lot of issues and challenges after, you know, the pandemic, dealing with so many challenges, and now we're kind of waking up and steadily getting out of the pandemic, and now it, facing issues on redistricting, facing issues on, you know, urban residential changes to, to different properties, single-family homes. And that's really impacting us. And, and we need a unified community. We need uh, Willow Glen to stay unified. Um, so we are very much against redistricting as proposed with the different maps. And we want to make that heard. Um, and, you know, these are working families that are here. Okay, ma'am, I'm, I'm sorry. The, the testimony that you're giving is really for the next item. The, the public comment for this particular item is specifically on my report of outreach and Enadina's report um, stating that we'll, we'll be, at the end of the meeting, we'll be having special meetings. So again, I wanna tell people who have their hands up, the next item, we're gonna have a map presentation. We're gonna um, show you the, the revised maps, and then we're gonna take public comment on that part. Okay, I'll reserve my comments till next. Okay. So anybody who has their hand up, if you wanna talk about the redistricting of your area or the maps, please put your hands down. This is just to talk about the report I did on outreach and, and the chair's comments. Barbara? Barbara, go ahead. Hi, yes, I'm, first off, I'm concerned that my the person who represents our District 9, our commissioner, is not here this evening. That's a big concern for us in District 9 since um, there's some drastic measures. Yes, he he's here. He's, he's in the meeting right now. Okay. Also, I believe that many of my residents in my, in my neighborhood were completely unaware and no out, I don't believe any outreach, public, public, enough public out, outreach was given. Thank you. Neil? Neil, go ahead. Hello, um, this is not item five, right? This is not the draft maps, no. Yes, okay, I will lower my hand. Thank you, save it. Tim? Yeah, I have a question regarding the process of becoming a member of the commission. Um, I'm just wondering right now if there is a conflict of interest being that one of your commission members is on the board for La Raza, which is completely supporting and pushing the unity map. If somebody could address that, that would be, be great. Thank you. Sandra? Yes, I think one of the most difficult things to do is public outreach. And I am sure that outreach was done, but I'd like to take note that perhaps we need to do it better. For example, I didn't see anything on next door. I didn't th see anything on Facebook. I get texts regularly from the city of San Jose about vaccinations. Redistricting is as important as vaccinations and it's here for the next 10 years. 
So I think we need to look at additional methods in the future. We may not be able to do it now, but we need to look at additional methods to reach people. Anybody who is on the uh, council members email list could have gotten a separate email. Um, so I think that outreach may have been done, but I don't think it's an effective as we would have hoped for those of us who somehow did not get reached. But I do want to commend the city for making the effort, but we need to improve in the future. Thank you so much for your time, commissioners, and thank you to the city clerk who works so diligently for all of us. Danny Choi. Yes, good, uh, good evening. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, the Thousand Oaks Neighborhood Association did not receive any outreach um, on this. So we we only heard a few days ago about this, this uh, process. And um, you had mentioned that uh, you received a list, a neighborhood organizations list provided by the mayor's office. And that was what you used in terms of mailing um, uh, information and outreach out to the neighborhood groups. I was wondering who do we contact to make sure that our neighborhood associations and groups are on that list for this and future efforts to make sure that we don't get missed for very important things like this. Ramona? Yeah, hi. Um, I just wanted to agree with one of the previous callers about being able to see who is in attendance at this particular meeting or any of the meetings that you had regarding this issue. Normally, when I attend other commission meetings, you can see how many people are there watching the meeting. And I think that would be helpful to give us a better idea of like how many people are here right now. I'd also like to know how many people were reached at each of these engagement sessions that you did in the different districts, because we're talking about something that affects a million people. So these are just comments that I would like to um, bring up because I do think it's important as an audience member to know how many people are attending the meetings. Thank you. Brenda. Hi, yes, uh, thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. Um, I also have some concerns about the outreach. Um, I don't think there was enough outreach that was done. For example, um, I just heard about it by accident <laughs> and somebody brought it up because they said that one of the maps was just crazy. Um, in any case, and, and that's how I became aware and got involved. Um, but I think more residents, especially in my district, need to find out what's going on and be aware of it. In addition to that, the unity map, from what I understand, there is a unity map for almost every city or every town across America or every uh, uh, community or even county. Um, so whoever is doing the unity maps um, is, you know, they're highly organized and they are definitely a special interest group um, and not unnecessarily residents with concerns about redistrict redistricting. Um, and I think that their unity map should be ignored because it's, I don't think it's a fair um, assumption on residents part for redistricting. So those are my comments. Have a good evening. Thank you. Back to the chair. Thank you. Moving on to item five, public hearing. Um, First, um, we will hear from redistricting partners on the uh, two additional draft maps that were posted this week. Um, we also have a few presentations of draft maps um, from various members of the public. So after we hear from redistricting partners, I will invite those uh, members of, pub of the public to raise their hand um, so that the city clerk can move into the as a panelist. Um, after each presentation, um, members of the commission will have an opportunity to ask questions of each presenter. After the last presentation is complete, we will open the lines um, for members of the public who would like to address the presentations of these additional draft maps planned. So with that, we'll first get started with uh, Chris of Redistricting Partners. Good evening. Good evening, and thank you for, thank you for having me back. Um, and I, 
as the chair um, introduced, um, my name is Chris Chafee. I'm from Redistricting Partners, and I have two maps to present. Um, I just wanted to start like I have been um, in previous meetings with the current lines um, and reminding everyone the reason we're here is, well, other than the Fair Maps Act and having a redistricting um, advisory committee, it's looking at your current lines and seeing that um, your current deviation is 24.2% with District 4 over by 17.1% and District 10 um, underpopulated by 7.1%. Um, we had a discussion um, last week about um, some, some slight changes um, and the creation of this plan, draft plan D. Um, and what the, the two major sh shifts in this plan um, was to move Little Portugal whole into D District 3 um, right in this area. Um, and then to move Ocala, this gray nub of District 5 from District 8 into District 5, from 8 into 5. Um, and that those were the major changes to District, to this plan from C4. Um, and it resulted in a total deviation for this plan of 5.8%. Um, the the second um, the additional comment and the just the the this draft plan D two um, comes from that draft D with Ocala in five and Little Portugal in three, but it was requested to look at the borders of District nine and District ten, um, and to try to move the District nine northern border to Cutler, um, and to try to move the District ten. Um, line northern line to highway 85 um and and i could do i could move it up to to cutler kind of on the north west, eastern side um and keep most of the neighborhoods whole but i couldn't i i couldn't go all the way across um it would have vastly overpopulated district nine and underpopulated district six um and the same thing is true with with um, District 10. I was able to move it for um, a portion to the 85 um, to use that natural boundary of the highway. But um, I also had to, you can see, kind of um, divide some neighborhoods up. And I have Maptitude ready so we can really dive in um, to looking at these lines, looking at how you shift, how you can or can't shift the lines around. Um, but I think one thing to realize um, with this shift is that this plan is now 9.9% as a 9.9% as a deviation. And you can see really the effects, right? District 10 now is 4.9% overpopulated. Um, District 9 is slightly underpopulated. So we could do some more shifting between 9 and 10. But District 6 now is underpopulated by 5% because that move to Cutler um, really underpopulated District 6 um, because of the density in that area and be, in between 6 and 9. Um, so there was never a discussion of where else to go. So I left it there. Um, but I think one of the things that needs to be discussed if D2 is um, a plan that the commission wants to go get into more detail with is kind of fixing District 6, adding population to it, um, and then a question on um, on District 10, that it's it's really overpopulated, it's really almost a 5%. Um, and so if you want to look at those lines again, and that again would be um, in this area, of course, you can see where what District six, um, I mean, how expanding it, what expanding it could look like, um, and the, and then the shifts between nine and ten. So those are the big, those are the two um, drafts that we discussed last week. That um, I'm available for questions, um, comments, and I give it back to the chair. Thanks, Chris. Are there any questions from the commission?
Yes. Uh, <clears throat> Commissioner Wright. Thank you. Um, Chris, you had asked as far as perhaps for suggestions with, uh, with District 10 being slightly overpopulated. Something that we have not talked about yet is the Communications Hill neighborhood, uh, which originally was part of District 7, as you're showing there. Are there any possibilities as to whether it might be more appropriate for it to be in uh, D9 or in D6? Because um, I know something else that I had mentioned at a previous meeting, perhaps uh, towards the eastern end of District 10's boundary is to include the Glider neighborhood. So just wanted to see if that might uh, give you some wiggle room as far as with the population numbers. Yeah, I mean, I think um, swap or moving um, communication hill over and back into seven. Um, as you can see, this is the current line. So um, that would unify a neighborhood back into seven. Seven is underpopulated by um, 2%. So um, I think that could be a shift um, over. But I think at the at Fundamentally, um, you also need to think about District 6 um, a little bit. I don't know. Um, I'm sure um, Commissioner Devilson De will, will provide some, some input as well. Um, and then looking at Glider Park, um, uh, I think if you give some to seven, you could do a swap and add that in. Um, I think that's in District 2, right? Currently. Um, that is correct. And 2 is is underpopulated, so you couldn't do a huge shift, but you could do some. And I think that's something we can explore um, if we'd like to during live line drawing. And I, I think that's gonna come after public comment or after all the, you know, the other map presentations as well. So, but we can, I'll, I'll, write, I'll write that down and we can start there if, if that's the, the interest of the commission. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Sidbury. Uh, thank you, Chris. Um, yes, I'm on board with the idea of putting Gladder Park back into District 7 because what we're doing, when you look at it, you're taking away the fairgrounds, if I'm not mistaken, from District 7. You can easily adjust that by, yes, moving Communication Hill into six that would give you more population and anything west of the railroad track there, uh, you can basically do the same thing. We're looking at uh, a mobile park unit uh, that's been in District 7 for many years and have gotten really good representation from our uh, city council people from the present and the past. And I think uh, our present uh, city council district person would be uh, on board, you know, once she gets an opportunity to look at the map, I don't know if they have or not, uh, would be, uh, would be uh, happy to see that also. Uh, we gotta have the fairground area back in district seven. We can't take that out of there. It's been there for years and it's, that representation in that area has been solid. So I think you've got an opportunity uh, to make this happen if you just take, um, yeah, communication hill. They, you know, you can put that in six. What, what I mean, what do you think? I know you just uh, commented on it, but um, that's that's where my that's where my people want to see it. Uh, the fairgrounds back in District Seven. I, I will follow your guys' lead. I'm not, I don't want to, you know, I think it, it's, it's a discussion point that we can, we can make. Um, and then the commission can um, kind of, you know, make a decision on where, where they want to go. You can also create, you know, two different options, moving communication hill into six or into seven um, and glider park into 10 or into seven um, and see what it, what it looks like. Um, 
and excuse me if I'm getting the districts wrong, the numbers wrong. Um, I, I just, I think when we get to the public mapping or the public drawing, live drawing, um, it'll become a lot more clear um, and we can just go from there. But I'm, I'm, I'm here for the long haul. So however we want, how, however long we want to do the live draw, I'm, I'm in. Okay. I just think that, um, you know, I've been in this district, uh, D seven for over 30 years and, and that fairgrounds has been there and to lose that, uh, population of citizens, uh, I think it'd be a disservice to them. So like you said, um, uh, you, you know, you're willing to go back and take another look at it, Chris, and I appreciate that. So just do the very best you possibly can, and it'll be something I can take back to some of the uh, community groups in my district. Thank you. Thank you. And um, Commissioner Sudbury, we can we can do do some of that during the map mapping um portion of, of this evening with, with Chris through the map district software. Um, so, so keep that in mind as well. Um, Commissioner Dillison. Thanks, good evening, hi Chris. Um, so I'll save my, any substantive comments I have for when we actually start kind of putting pen to paper for lack of a better word in term. So I just wanna understand the differences between D and D2 hoping maybe that we can focus when it does come to line drawing rather than jumping back and forth. So is the difference between D and D2 focused almost exclusively on the six, nine and 10 area and are the rather remaining districts all functionally identical? Exactly. Okay, all right. So it's just six, nine and 10 are the only two differences with the, my understanding with the primary difference being at the southern border of six northern border of nine exactly or uh, yeah and then and then this movement right 10 moving up to the 85 right yeah those are this is the only difference um these two air two areas of the map are the only differences from d to d2 okay all right i'll save the balance for my comments and my recommendation for when we get to the map drawn thank you sure Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Faden. Thank you. Um, it's pretty much around what Andrew was saying too. Um, I am concerned on District 9. Um, we're talking about trying to keep uh, communities of interest together, but we're actually cutting up and I'll, I'll talk, as Andrew said, I'll talk more specifically with regard to this map when we start to look at it. But I am very, very concerned that We've got District 9 itself is essentially has been created as communities of interest. And now we're cutting it at the wrong place and going to be cu cutting out several communities of interest because District 9 itself has several neighborhoods that have been District 9 forever. And now we're moving them around. And it just seems to me that one of the things we should take a look at is we're trying to create the new redistricting because we want to comply with the new census and the population and balance the population out and keeping in mind the communities of interest along with the marginalized communities that have not been um, represented in the past but at the same time I think we should start with where the districts have been and just do more minor adjustments to allow for the population and I'm, I'm having a real issue with the maps that start from scratch and just kind of do away with all the districts and let's just do it all from all new. Just just one one point of clear clarification. Um, D this plan came from the from the C's, which were built from the current lines try, to try to minimize the current lines. And so this is probably like three derivations from there um, or four, depending on your, how you, you you count, but the idea was to try to keep try to do minimal change, and follow neighborhood district neighborhood lines as much as possible. Um, but I just I wanted to flag that. Okay, uh, seeing no other hands, 
Um, what we're moving on next is uh, the presentation by the members of the public who have um, draft maps to present to the commission. If you have a draft map that you are going to present to the commission, uh, please raise your hand so that the clerk can move you into a panelist. Um, if you have public comment regarding the district map, I would request that you please put your hand down um, until um, we open that up for public comment. Okay, so I have four hands up. Again, these are for people who have maps they want to present. What I would do is promote you to panelists for you to share your screen to show us your map. If you don't have a map to show us, you're gonna just like put your hand down and then you'll talk um, when we go to public comment. Um, so I just wanna make sure that's clear. This is for sharing a map with the commission and telling us about it. So the first person I'm gonna move over to panelist is Cher. Okay, Cher, you're in, um, you're in as a panelist. You have the ability to share your screen. Okay, there we go. I'm in now. Can you, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. It's fun times in Zoom, right? <laughs> okay. And you can see this presentation, Redistricting Community Map 2.0? Yes. Okay. So the first thing I would like to say is I saw the new maps last night, the D and the D2, and I'm still very, very confused. I don't know if C4 is off the table now, or we still have C4 and we have D and we have D2. I would like that clarified at some point. I don't know what we're moving forward with. So um, what I'm presenting is a community map 2.0, which is a revision of last, last week's. This doesn't need to be said. That doesn't need to be said. Um, this is current districts. I think based on current conversation, that doesn't need to be said. Uh, draft plan C4, I don't know if that exists. I would like to know if this draft plan C4 is still on the table. Um, things are very confusing. So I looked at your draft plan D, okay? So I'm basing my presentation on draft plan D that was uploaded last night, okay? So, and this is it here. So um, that's about our map. This is just numbers, don't need it, okay? This is a map that shows um, the differences between our community 2.0 map. So you see the very kind of faint colors here. That shows where we like basically do not agree with the draft plan um, D. So I can go into, let me see if it's easier to just go into, um, here you go, community map 2.0 versus San Jose draft plan D. Okay, if people can see it okay, I'm gonna stick on this. Um, if you can see my cursor, uh, can somebody tell me on the commission, does this, can you see my cursor up here by district four and district five? Yes. Okay, so District 4 and District 5, Penitencia Creek, okay? The draft plan D maps have Penitencia Creek inside of, taken over by District 5. And we've heard from the very beginning for the past three weeks, the Penitencia Creek neighborhood wants to stay intact in District 4, okay? So we do not support that being District 5 moving up there. We've spoken to all of the four board members of their neighborhood association and they want to keep, so that is, whoops, what happened? So that is a big deal. We wanna keep Penitencia Creek in district four, the entire neighborhood and keep district five boundary only up to Mayberry here, okay? And extend district five a little bit to the west back to district four used to be right here. 
So we want District 5 to go there instead and take up that area. Okay, so that is like a big deal. Um, the other thing I want to point out, District 5, the airport down here. The airport is supposed to be part of District 5. It's always been. And now we've got it in District 8. So that's a big deal. We want to move that airport and have it back originally where it was supposed to be. There's also a little correction here on Little Portugal. Okay, it's just not quite right. This little neighborhood on the bottom is supposed to be south. Um, I think that's called Short Ridge. That needs to be fixed. Okay. And then we have moved district, because of all that, we've moved district three a little bit further to compensate for the numbers up here into district four. Okay. So I'm going to move down to district seven. You know, that stuff's fine. That's, I, I don't have any problem with that. One thing I want to mention is Communication Hill. Okay. Communication Hill, if you see my pointer down here, Communication Hill has an entrance over here, basically from Hillsdale that goes to a separate part of the hill. Communication Hill can easily be split in half. There's separate entrances. The fairgrounds itself is still in District 7 on this map, by the way. But on Monterey Highway here, that mobile home park, the cemetery, um, the um, flea market, that this has a separate entrance over here on Monterey Highway. That's so this can be split right in across here with then it's totally different areas. And this little neighborhood here comes in from Curtin or this mobile home park comes in from over here. So I would like to look deeper into splitting up Communication Hill so as not to have to just do some massive shifting around of everything. District six, I feel that we talk to people over here in this Goodyear Mastic and these three areas south of 280. They're a very tight knit community. And moving this Goodyear Mastic here across the freeway, across 87 into district seven makes no sense to me. I want to investigate this Goodyear Mastic, keeping it over here in District 7, okay? And because those are a, a close-knit community right there. So, and they're already getting pushed out of three, you know, because they're south of 280 because of the shift up here. So in that regard, I think Santana Row over here should just be kept in District 6. That'll balance for this population shift that you're trying to put over here across 87. Santana Row should just be kept in District 6 like it already is because the numbers will still work out, okay, as far as population, small deviation. Um, the other pieces, I, I understand there's some juggling going on here on the 6-9, and I think that'll probably get hashed out, okay. Um, I think those, let me look at my notes super quick here and see, based on the new stuff, if there's anything else in particular. I think that covers, yeah, Little Portugal needs to get fixed, Reed Hill New Airport. Penitentiary Creek is a big deal, in my opinion, big deal. There's no reason that District 5 can't just come across Mayberry, take up what used to be District 4 down here anyway. Why would you take District 5 into 4 here instead of just completing it across to the west? It doesn't make any sense, okay? And um, aside from that, you know, maybe there's little tiny things, but those are like really the big deals that I, that I would like to point out that needs some investigation. So checking out Communication Hill, it could be split. It's got lots of separate areas and you can maintain all that stuff by the fairgrounds and Monterey Highway. Uh, like I said, the Santana Row and these, these neighborhoods down here are very closely knit. Um, airport, up there. And like I said, I know something's gonna get going on down here. Let me take a quick look. I think those are my main corrections. And I do know that there has been uh, some discussion among some groups about making some changes here around um, Duradon Station based on the San Jose vision plans and vision map and stuff like that. So I think that's something that needs to be investigated on the, the vision plans that have been you know, voted in by the city council around Duradon Station. So I think, who knows? I think I covered my stuff. <laughs> Thank you. Cheryl. Um are you able to share the close up map of the Short Ridge area? Yeah. I, Little Portugal? Short Ridge is, um, there's that, there's that. Little Portugal is district, is it on five? Yeah, it's yeah. one slide, one okay. slide after five. Yeah, so here's over by Little Portugal. See this little Short Ridge area? We were only supposed to bring the two businesses on either side of Alum Rock. They want those kept in district three. But the, the residents right below that, they want that kept in District 5. And right now, this whole section here is up in District 3. I think it's just, we've been meddling around with Little Portugal trying to get it fixed because it's such an 
you know, it, you have to, you know, really get in there on that one. But, you know, so that one does need the proper attention to get that fixed properly. Yeah, and it seems like the redistricting tool um, does not allow us to be able to split it up um, properly. Yeah, any other ones, Sonia, that I need to dig into just to show better, to, the, to show the, um, yeah, this is how we'd like to see the four or five border here. Only five, see, because if you look at the, the, the white space is what's, you know, uh, up for, so to speak, different, you know, between the D2, uh, the D map and ours. So, or the, uh, sorry, this is the original versus ours. So we just want to move District 5 only up to Mayberry here and fill in this part that was District 4 over here and keep that like a nice uniform thing and not go, because right now the DMAP has Penitentiary Creek just getting split in half here. And I don't see any reason to go in that direction instead of just filling in the population over here. Um, do we have anything else? That's our expansion in four. Um, there's one little thing. This is a new hall area that we wanted to point out that's, that's been in District 3, but potentially was like an oversight that should go into District 6. Just wanted to point it out. Um, and then District 2, like you said, I think you guys took, I think maybe this wasn't congruent. So you took District 2 out here and put it into 7. That's what I'm And show, can you show just the District 10 slide? Because there is a little piece that's been uh, missing in all the maps uh, as well. 10. Yeah, the little circle. Yes, 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 yes. Where District 10, very important, the little tiny piece, where is it? Um, can we see it on the map here? Yeah, on the far right over. Um, I moved my little thing. Yeah, I, I have it as a bullet so point. Right here, this is super like easy to ignore. So on the current map down here by Branham and Monterey, District 10 goes down in this little arm here. And there is a neighborhood association right here that is needs to stay intact with this area here. So if somebody could look at Branham and Monterey, this, this is existing here, but in the new maps that's been cut off, maybe because somebody just didn't notice on there. So D10, uh, if you can investigate and see, you know, put this little like finger piece back on here to keep the HOA together there in the district. That would be good. Um, anything else, Sonia? Um, I think that's about, it in terms of the feedback. And like you had mentioned earlier, over in the uh, D3, Dix, D6 boundary over the, at the Deridon, um, yeah. because that's all newer information. And so um, that definitely needs closer attention and to be yeah. out a little bit better. There's been some recent discussion about that and stuff. So I don't know, it, like I said, it's to do with the existing San Jose vision plan and all these things council has voted in. So, okay, anything else, Sonia? Thank God you're uh, to help me remember that. <laughs> uh, I, well, we're here for the community, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, we, and, and just by the way, we had we did have a meeting on Monday night and several leadership council people joined, so we were happy about that. And we've been able to, you know, they gave their input and part of that, is, what we're saying is based on that, those, that meeting. And then we've been able to talk to several neighborhood associations. And so some of our input is, Based on that, you know, we were especially concerned down in District 9 when the, you know, the previous map, that C4, which I still don't know if it's valid or not anymore, was breaking up this whole area down here. That was very concerning down there. So, um, yeah, I think, is that it, Sonia, basically enough? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if any of the commissioners um, have any questions, then we'll gladly Thank you. Available. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, Thank you, Sharon, Sonia, for, for this um, presentation and, and for the thought and time that um, went into um, just pointing out a lot of detail here. Um, thank you for that. Um, I had a couple of questions, and I'll just start while I wait for fellow commissioners to raise hands. Um, I was wondering, I think you guys are keeping Berryessa in D3, and I'm wondering um, what uh, um, what was the reasoning behind moving oh, that to three um, as opposed um, to, I believe, keeping it in four? Well, if you look at the district three, I mean, because uh, district four has, I think, a 26,000 population higher than the lowest population. So in the city, which is district nine. So district three and district five have to move into district four. There's no choice about that. 
we have to absorb, District 3 and District 5 have to absorb some of that population from District 4, because there's 26,000 of all the variables. So, you know, so that's why the current map, District 3 is, this is the boundaries for District 3, but we suggest that we move in a little bit further into four, keep the flea market area intact, because, you know, that's a big thing over there. And, but we needed to move somewhere up there. So this was just our suggestion. We can't go north because then we'll hit the, the boundary with, with the bay and then we'll dissect district four and a half if we went straight north. So that was the only place we sought to go to absorb some of that population. Yeah, because district four and three have the highest population growth over the years, um, over the decade. And so the only um, districts without really doing drastic changes are the adjacent ones to absorb that, but it does have some domino effect. And so that's why a lot of the district lines need to move somewhat northward. Um, and so that's what we're trying to capture while minimizing the amount of change within each district. And I do have a slide that shows, you know, the population balance with this, with this map, if you want to see that. You can see the population per district, and I think the deviation is 2.8% across. For our map. Yeah, so there, basically, to answer your question there as well, the, um, where's our population? Somewhere. Uh, population, yeah. So here's our population balance, right? Community map 2.0. So then you can see District 3, District 4, District 5, because District 4 was up at 120,000 without any changes, right? So here you can see District 4, we got it down from 120,000 down to 103,000. And the only things that bordered it was 3 and 5. So District 3, you know, we dropped it by 17,000, 16,000. And now District 5 is at 102, District 3 is at 101. So we tried to balance out that area as the starting point and then shift things down or upward from there for the other districts. And so okay. our map, okay. I also want to point out, is 2.82% deviation. So it allows for flexibility also to make these any type of um, adjustments within the borders. But again, yeah, I want to emphasize this clean border. I just have a real <laughs> issue with that border there with the 45, the boundary. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Martinez. Yes, I was going to um, um, thank Cher for this great detail she's looking at. I wanted uh, again to ask her to take a close look at the airport suggestion she was making oh. regarding that little finger that, oh, that we spoke there. about. That you're talking about the, the Reed Hill view down at five. Oh, Reed Hill view. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Just the I, yeah. yeah. Again, I'm looking at a real small laptop, so oh, I'm just trying oh. to take a better look at the detail. Um, yeah, go ahead. Well, personally, what I was... I went and took a ride because I, I made a suggestion about Reed Hillview last week. And then we got into a conversation that that had evergreen schools. And then I have people telling me that Alum Rock School, uh, a Meyer School, is, it sits right, it is next to the airport. But I was just trying to see uh, the, the concern is, in other words, the suggestion is minimally placed in the airport in five because uh, the airport itself probably doesn't affect population very much. Correct. So, be, but but j just that the Meyer School touches the airport. It's right on the same block. I think it's Cunningham. Uh, so I was just going to, I just was thinking, I don't know how much you can do to reduce population being taken from seven and eight. Or, I mean, it's, uh, I'm, I think it was affecting eight or something, but just the airport, suggesting that some the map makers look at just the airport because the person who called me about this concern, not only were they talking about schools, but they said that 
th three of the last crashes of the planes are landing on homes in five. So I'm gonna look at that to verify that comment. But that was some of the concern that some people had when they called me about this. Wow. So yeah, I agree that, that, that the airport basically has no population there. Um, my understanding is, you know, I, is that the airport has always officially been in District 5. Maybe some of the maps may have it wrong or something. I don't know why. But my understanding yeah. is that it's been part of District 5 to begin with. So that's mm. kind of the point that I'm making because population-wise, it's not. Yeah. And, yeah, and and District Five actually has been having regular meetings regarding the airport. So they have that community has invested quite a bit of time and energy yeah. into it. So it to take that away from them, I think, would be a disservice to a lot of communities, or that it, it impacts them quite greatly. So, and we're just trying to honor what was originally the original um, district lines. Yeah, what is your thinking, Ramon? Are you thinking that district uh, that the airport is better in District Eight, or I'm not? Sure. No, no, no. In five, I, I was. Oh, good. I, I okay. was thinking you were suggesting it was it would be removed from five. No, sir. I am suggesting that all a lot of the maps we look at have mm -hmm. the airport in District Eight. A lot of the I think the current recommended D doesn't D have it in District yeah. Eight. Yeah, and so yeah. I'm asking they they look at making sure that it's back in five and and exactly. just trying to minimize the population change that'll help some of that discussion that's going on about you know helping out seven and eight yeah yeah there, yeah, there is not there isn't that much population there so that definitely there's no reason the population should not be a reason why it would not be there yeah because if you look at the community map versus the plan d you see why that's kind of a lighter color is because it's not where we think it should be. The, mm -hmm. the plan B has it down in District A, and our understanding is it should be in District 5, where it was, where it belongs. Except, can I speak, because I'm in District 8, except the fact that we lost population, and that's why we moved forward, we moved north into District 5, because we were under, we had under numbers, and we needed to, to adjust that, which barely made it so that we're now at least somewhat within the range. Well, there's no population at the airport. No, but this the, the, the discussion about Alcala, this little section next to the airport, that's what we were wanting to go into, sec, into District 8. Right. I also saw that you guys are moving over here into uh, Valley Palms. And the DMAP has you moving into Valley Palms as well, District 8. That was to uh, that was to absorb some population because, like I said, we had lost considerable number of people. Yeah, I wonder what the where's the population. Yeah, so this would put um, as is as our community map is. It would put District Eight. It it already so our community map puts you guys up at one hundred and three thousand. So it puts you way up. So this map here that you're looking at without Ocala and with I mean with with uh, what is that? Um, Without the airport. Yeah, yeah. If you guys keep Ocala, because I think the D two map, I mean the D map, has you guys losing Ocala as a problem, right? The um, plan C four, the D map. Yeah. So the D map has you guys losing Ocala, and so we put Ocala back so you don't lose population. So I don't know why. Um, the D map moves Ocala from D8 when you want to increase your population, but instead they took away your population. Yeah. So uh, Ocala, should, in, in my opinion, should stay in D8, and then you will have the population you want. And then the airport doesn't need to move over there because there is no population. And then you guys also took Valley Palms here. So I think one of the problems is why would you move Ocala into D5? instead of keep it in D8, and then you have your population. And then as you can see, D8 is at 103, which is great. So if you keep Ocala like you had, and you just took Valley Fair, then you guys are at 103. Thank you. Uh -huh. yeah, May I speak? Thank you. <laughs> oh. 
Um, I, I just wanted to clarify that I'm the source of the change of Ocala, I think, last week because some of the resident callers were asking about Oca Ocala School is uh, an Alum Rock School. So they were asking that it remain in the five area. And that's. It wasn't, oh, it wasn't in the, it won't remain. You mean you want to. It wasn't. No, no. Uh, they they were asking that it be in it, so that's probably oh. may have been from where the change came from. Oh, okay. Yeah, and the thing is, I think you know, in five five is at one hundred and two thousand on our map, and five you know it had to take up some stuff here from just before. Right? I mean, that's like the primary place. You got to fix that first, just yeah. in order to move down. So, but I, I hear what you're saying. It's like a neighborhood of interest type thing. Right. But like, like I said, I mean, this, our map has a 2.82% um, deviation right now. So um, it can allow for flexibility for refinement along those edges. I guess there's allowed to be like a 10% across the board. I, yeah. I'm guessing we probably yeah. don't be up at 10%, but <laughs> I guess. Yeah, that's exactly. That's right. Commissioner Barragon. I want to thank uh, Cher and Sonia for uh, putting this presentation together for the commission. Thank you for all your hard work in, in moving these maps forward. Um, just out of curiosity, uh, I noticed that the district three boundaries, you want to push them north, you know, everything a little bit north. And we're leaving out neighborhoods like the Guadalupe, Washington neighborhood that is part of district three. I just want to know what's the rhyme and reason for uh, having the boundaries go further north than south. Well, I mean, you have to go north because uh, District 4 has a population that's 120,000 more than the lowest district, right? So if you look at, um, yeah, so the current districts, right? District 4 is 120,000. That's like the highest one. So the first goal is you have to reduce the district. And we're at a 19% deviation across the, across the city with that. So the first thing that you can't ignore, the first thing you have to do is figure out how you're going to reduce district four. The only way to reduce district four to begin with is to move three and five to take part of, right? So I have to absorb, basically take up, you know, like 60,000 you know, people. So after we did that, the question is, and these, these areas here, I believe each of these little areas, they're very dense areas. They've got like, I don't know, like- It's, it's over 4,000. It's between four to 5,000 per a little block. So it, it's very dense. And the problem is district six also is overpopulated as it stands today. So it's really difficult um, unless you do some serious, drastic changes, which will cause a ripple effect throughout the whole city if you try to bring up other districts, like six, to try to take on some of what's going on north of District 3 and into 4. Because these areas down here by 280, there's like at least, I don't know what it is, 15, 16,000 people down there. It's very dense. Yeah. And so if you wanted to keep them all together, which my understanding is they're a close-knit community. That's my understanding. And that they would, people, we talked to a couple of people there that they like being together. So if you took 16,000 people, how would you put all them back into district three, right? And then you'd have to go back to like that C4 map where you basically break, you know, the whole of district three, uh, you know, it has to be, you have to like, just have like a, a you know, a, a narrow little path up to B4. So, so our thinking was, and the, they're south of 280, and you know we did talk to a couple of people there, and it's yeah. And, and and I also sent out emails to um, the, some of the district leaders, and unfortunately, I haven't gotten a response back because I was trying to help make them aware that this was going on and trying to um, just be able to keep their communities together, but. We did reach out to some of the community members and were able to get feedback regarding um, the division of how historically um, the, just 280 alone does create somewhat of a barrier between their communities and D3. 
and when given the options or the um, they would rather stay together. And didn't one of them make a comment that they actually felt a little bit ignored in District Three, and we're getting some uh, some good attention? Yeah, but yeah, that, that's another com <laughs> conversation. I heard something like that. So anyway, so that's our thinking, and that's why I don't like the idea of uh, or we don't like the idea of um, making District Six take up Goodyear, and and Goodyear is like in with District Six across. Guadalupe across 87 and those districts aren't kept together. And then the, the Gardner people, um, we talked to them, they're kind of half in three and half in six, but they said that we have, we on our map, they're completely in six. And they said they like that and they want it to be together to, down there because that's really their community. That, yeah, that, and they also felt really divided over the decade um, or I, I actually, I don't know when it got divided that way. Um, but they do feel better represented if they were in D6. So. Yeah, I don't know what else D, yeah, it's tough because like you said, District 3, we have to take such a chunk. And, uh, I, you know, I don't know, it, it, it's a tough thing on District 3, but, you know, so I, I don't know if you have any other questions on that. It, it's definitely uh, a complex uh, task, but I thank you for both of you taking it on and, and doing your outreach for District 3 and advocating. The, the other question was, you mentioned a meeting. Uh, when You said a meeting was Monday? Can you expand there, on that? We got invited to a leadership meeting uh, on, on Monday night. That yeah, all district a CLC meeting. Um, and so there was outreach uh, to all the leaders within the districts um, for their CLCs to get them up to speed and let them know and also to gather feedback um, about the particulars of their communities. Okay, thank you for that ladies. Commission thank you, Commissioner Collins. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, briefly thank Sharon and Sonia for the work they've done on this map and uh, appreciate the time and effort that you've put into this. So thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Fadum. Yeah, thank you. I, again, I think Sharon Sonia put a lot of work into the map. Can I ask you to go back um, to show me from what you guys show between District 6 and 9 as deviating from the Plan D2 map that you started with? Uh, okay, 2.0 versus Plan D. Okay. okay. So there, what I noticed is last night you guys uploaded a D and a D2. Okay, and D2 has a lot more changes. It takes District Six a lot further down into District Nine. So we just stuck with the D to keep it more minimal because we don't really know that area as much. So what I see here is. There was some feedback from the Willow Glen Neighborhood Association. This little part right here, they uh, they had submitted public input a couple of weeks ago with some examples of what they would like to see with a little bit of expansion back to what they used to have a long time ago or something. So we we took kind of the minimal one of those and added this little section here that that they said they had discussed with the residents and they wanted that there. And so we left that. But on the D map it goes even further down here. And so we just don't know that. I mean, it affects a lot of people and population wise, there's the trade off on that versus the Kanoas Gardens over here. So there's kind of a split. This is, is this Almaden or 87 or something right here that this is all the district six, the farm and Rubino and Kanoas right. Gardens district six. But there's kind of a splitting line. I can't remember if that's, Almaden, or I think it might be Almaden. Or this should be Almaden, yeah, yeah, expressway right down there. Yeah, so I kind of thought, well, you know, we're already taking District 9 up into here, right? So I don't, it's kind of a trade off if you leave District 6, you know, at like we have it, or if you move it down further, you know, because I don't know what that does down there. So there's like kind of a trade off here between Kanoas Garden and that area. I think, what did we have in our two point in our map? Was it, um, yeah, we've got, um, yeah, we've got it further up. We just have Farm and Rubino and, and, 
and this left here. So just do the D2 map. Cheryl, do you want to show the nine map that we have of what was a shift from the original current um, district lines? Okay, so this is nine, uh, this one? Yeah, so these are the only changes from the existing districts that our map does. It moves a little bit of um, the Willow Valley, is it Willowville, sorry, Willow <laughs> down, Hill. yeah. And her input from the Willow Glen uh, Labor Association. And then it moves nine up here because nine needs to grow a little bit, a bit, you know, because they were the lowest. So we took this farm in the Vino area here and expanded nine up into here. So yeah, that and that's the only difference between what the current existing boundaries are versus our map. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, that That clarifies it. Yeah, that's what we have on there. Yeah, kept it kind Thank of you. simpler than because th that boundary up there on six and nine, it's already so up and down anyway, right? And then there was like shifted down and more up and down. And I was like, you know. <laughs> right. And the problem is, is that boundary has established the communities between those two boundaries. And you got to be careful where you're going to shift that boundary because then you're going to split up the communities. Yeah, it was a exactly. lot. Exactly. It was a lot of up and down going on there with that. Uh, yeah. With that. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, that's the boundary that, for some reason, they believe can be moved so easily, and and really, it's it's that's not true. Because it's Those a are, lot. When you go across there, it's the Bagby, it's the Willow Vale, it's this one, it's that one. It's a lot of stuff, right? Exactly, and it's a community that's that's used to being in District Nine, and to all of a sudden flip them is going to be pretty upsetting. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Thank you. Huh? Thanks. Commissioner Sidbury. Okay, uh, Commissioner. No, I dropped, I dropped my oh, uh, sorry. hand. I dropped my hand. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Martinez. No, that's from last time. Okay, well, ladies, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, it was certainly yeah. informative. Um, thank you, and I would still love to know if we're just at the D and the D2, is the C4 off the table, or is that still something that, that's on the table? Right? At some point, I would love to get that answered. Yes, I think that's, a, that's an appropriate question. So all of the draft maps that are on the agenda today, so that uh, are, are, are still, I guess, in the running, if you will. So we have not eliminated any. Okay, so the A, the B, the C. And there is no, there's no baseline or starting that yet. So anything on the website is fair game, right? Okay, thank you guys. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Thank you um, City clerk, do we have any other presentations um, from any members of the public today? Uh, Jeffrey Buchanan is next. Oh. Hi, members of the commission. Let so me what do you think? Sorry, I don't know someone's on mute. Sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, yep, Jeffrey Buchanan uh, with uh, uh, Silicon Valley Rising Action. Uh, and just to say, I think there's been some comments about you know who our organization and the different civil rights organizations are. Um, I'm, a, I'm a community member. I'm a trustee representing the Luther Burbank School District, a school district that includes District 6. Uh, my, my colleague here today, Andreas Quintero, you know, is a, is a school board member in Olive Rock. I think there's been a lot of accusations made by some folks in the public and, you know, it's fine to disagree, but I think um, trying to paint members of our community in different ways and to dis you know, play these kinds of games is not really helpful for the conversation. So I, I hope that we can uh, remember we're all here just trying to figure out what's best for, for our community here. We're all community members. Um, wanted to share, we had submitted to the clerk an updated version based off of our conversations with a number of, uh, neighborhood associations and community groups across the city. I, I don't believe it was, was able to be included yet, but would encourage hopefully for your next meeting, uh, if, if the clerk and redistricting partners are able to include that as a map, um, wanted to walk through a couple of the, the changes that were made. Um, after talking with uh, leaders of groups in District 9, uh, we did add a few of the neighborhood associations to the uh, west of I should say to the east uh, of, of our, our district line. So Carson, Pinehurst, Thousand Oaks, Erickson, and Tatra. 
uh, now are, are, are remaining in District 9. We, we heard from some community leaders that those neighborhoods have been working together for a long time and would like to keep in District 9. So we want to be respectful of that. Um, additionally, uh, we, you know, we, we understand that there's still some conversations and some disagreements between different parts of the uh, currently of the uh, um, the Dearden Station area with Delmas Park, Delmas Park Association, uh, wanting to remain in three, some different parts of, of that, of the, the Gardner, Delmas Park, Shasta Hanstra and others, trying to figure out what do they all go in six, do parks go here? I, I think we'd be amenable in our map to trying to figure out what those those organizations finally agree on. But for now, we're, we're keeping Delmas Park uh, within our map. Um, I did want to, and then again, we, we had, even though our map shows part of Reed Hillview outside, we had asked to keep the remaining line in Reed Hillview. Um, I think the other uh, organizations spoke to the fact because the, that census block there includes uh, some population and a trailer park inside of the census block that includes like four or five different census blocks. You, you can't actually just have the, the airport in five and the residential in eight uh, going by census blocks. And so, you know, we encourage that line. I think you've heard other commenters talk about that tonight. Um, I would like to, to take a moment just quickly. And again, I know there's a lot of folks who are waiting to comment. So I'll try to be very brief about the differences between our map and some of the maps being presented here tonight and by the commissioners, um, because I think it's really important. Um, I think when we're talking about just moving lines on a board, um, sometimes we forget, you know, redistricting is about people. It's not about the straightness of lines. And sometimes in talking about moving lines and moving dots on a board, it, it may seem like a little bit like a game of monopoly, but you know, in the end, it's gonna have real implications for communities across, across the city. And looking at first starting with the community map, um, there is a substantial decrease in the voice of Asian, Latino and black voters across districts if the city were to rep, were to implement the community map, for instance, across districts one through eight, there's about a 1.2% reduction in population district by on average in districts uh, for API Latino and black uh, voice uh, compared to the unity map. Uh, this is most substantial when we look at district three uh, by choosing to move uh, the neighborhoods that were discussed. Um, and I would disagree. I think you should, you know, hopefully get some more comment from these neighborhood associations. It sounded like the, 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 the folks who presented before talked to one or two people. I've heard from a lot of folks in Washington, Guadalupe and Spartan Keys that do not want to leave District 3. And by moving those communities out of District 3, by moving Delmas Park uh, and Gardner out of District 3, you are leading to something like a 7.8% reduction in the Latino population of District 3 you know, the kind of move that really starts to sound like voter suppression uh, in terms of how the decisions are made with these maps. Um, similarly, in the community maps District 5, they reduced our, in our Latino uh, uh, majority minority district as a city, they reduced the Latino population by four. While the speakers before us did say, you know, there's a lot of Northern pressure and you got to move North, our map shows how you can still keep the core of downtown together, keep the core of District 5 and East San Jose together, while continuing to keep those cultural communities that have linkages together and to keep very similar uh, levels of, 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 of demographics here in these communities, instead of really engaging the kind of voter suppression that could have not only bring the possibility of, of challenges to these maps, but really change the fabric of, of our community. Um, similarly, across both the community map, uh, C3, and I think the new D maps, we've seen, I guess across the D maps and the community map, the movements to the south of, of District 6, uh, taking out the neighborhoods, uh, the multifamily neighborhoods in the southeastern corner of the, the Willow Glen Association. And you know, they also have their own association taking that, that multifamily corner out uh, of District 6 would also have Willow Creek, it's, it's known by, it would have big implications for the demographics of District 6 in terms of reducing the black population, the Latino population, and even the Asian population. 
Similarly, moving the Willow Glen line south, which happens in the community line, in the community map in C3 and D and D2, uh, you know, that is significantly reducing the voices of a pretty large Latino population in District 6 uh, and of the renter population by bringing largely white single family homeowners into greater proportion into District 6, really watering down those voices. Um, there, there are a number of bit, when we when we talk about uh, the uh, in the D map the inclusion of uh, Communications Hill and talking with D seven residents, there's a feeling that Communications Hill is really an essential part of that that district, and so to lose that um, is not something that we should engage in willy nilly or you know divide it in half, slice it up. Um, that's a that's a that's a neighborhood that you know, is a community of interest, deserves to remain whole. Uh, additionally, by taking the moves of moving uh, those neighborhoods that have, you know, large numbers of Chicano homeowners that have been there for generations in terms of, you know, Goodyear Mastic, uh, Guash and Guadalupe, Spartan Keys, moving that into District 7, uh, you're substantially diluting the Asian vote within District 7. Again, you know, raising the possibility of some challenges of these maps. And so I would just encourage I think in this process, it's really easy uh, looking at the Zoom screen and, and trying to look at lines move to not think about the makeup of these neighborhoods and what it looks like when we make these moves. Uh, would certainly encourage the, uh, the the commissioners here tonight to think about, you know, while maybe presenting multiple maps to the council, thinking about trying to keep at least one map in the mix that does maintain these particular communities of interest uh, maintains our majority minority districts and our Asian and Latino influence districts and tries to undo some of these historic wrongs when it comes to creating lines that actually increase instead of decrease the political voice of Latino, uh, Asian and black voters uh, here in the city of San Jose. Um, Andres, did you wanna share any additional comments? Oh, I don't know if he was able to get in. I may have made a mistake there that he's not on. Hi there. Oh, Hello. There you go. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so, uh, re really, uh, I encourage you to kind of think not in presenting. There are options that allow you to be able to achieve um, those numbers that you're looking for while still keeping communities of interest together. The Unity Map is an example of that. And I know that there are certain areas of contention. Um, those obviously, as Jeff has mentioned, can be worked out through dialogue, through through continued uh, uh, input. Um, but uh, the Union Map does does provide you an example of what you can do if you go out there and get some input, uh, like the the hard work that we that we have engaged in um, over the course of a significantly long time. Uh, I would just encourage you to really consider it. And please, um, I, I I I don't want to continue to repeat what my colleague said here. We are from the community and these allegations uh, that have been raised in, by previous commenters about outside folks, I'm, I'm, I represent 100,000 people. I was a, co a commissioner just like you in the city of San Jose before I went to, um, to represent those people. Uh, I know what it is. I, you, I know you have a thankless job. It's a very difficult time. You're very, very condensed time that you're working in, the constraints and the pressures that you're receiving. So I, I thank you for the work that you're doing and the, and the effort that you're putting into it. But I also want to stand up for those of us who have been on the other side right now, uh, gathering input and doing the work that I know benefits you because you are getting the, the benefit of the information that we're bringing from the groups that we've been working with from the community that's been providing us input. So thank you for the work that you've done thus far. And I would hope that we continue to engage in dialogue that allows us to, to come up with maps that keep these communities of interest together um, and, uh, and, still, and still abide by the law. Yeah, and I just say, you know, while the community map perhaps has the highest level of dilution of Latino voices, you know, we see similar in the D and D2 and C3 maps, significant drops in, in East San Jose uh, and in downtown San Jose in the Latino population. And so um, we just need to be thoughtful about when we're making choices about who's in and who's out of some of these districts. It, while it may not be anyone's intention, um, some of these choices that have been discussed have pretty significant consequences to communities across the city. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Um, are there any uh, questions for the presenters from the commission? 
Okay, I don't see any. Um, oh, Commissioner Bar Baragan, Baragan, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Baragan. Uh, thank you, Jeffrey and Andres, for revising and updating and, and providing the outreach uh, for some of the, some more of the communities. I appreciate that and good work. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Berger. Commissioner Martinez. Yeah, I wanted to thank Jeffrey for being tuned in to the very detail of the Gardner neighborhood. Um, I have all kinds of uh, connections all over. Uh, there's so many interests here. Uh, I worked at Gardner Washington schools in the past in the Gardner neighborhood and dividing that neighborhood, again, minimizing its division is, is real important. Um, and just commenting, it, we need to take a close look at that. That's a very, um, it, 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 it's a very complicated little corner. And with the Google projects coming in and all that, that and the and the the um, bullet trains and all that, they're just going to plow through that community that was destroyed already in the 1960s by 280. So I know that this issue is not going to disappear about about um, the Gardner area. Commissioner Alvarez. Yes, I have a question. In District 8, is that that we have a minus 1.72 in population? Uh, so that, that's, the, that's the deviation uh, from the ideal. Okay, because that really brings us below. We were before 0 0.4. We, weren't, we, we needed population, but this really cuts us some people. So and why you did that? Oh yeah. So the yeah. only the only changes that we had. Let me bring up the old district line. Um, so we added population. We added population up here. Uh, this is part of uh, I believe it's the Mount Pleasant School District that uh, is still in five, um, and so we added that to District Eight. Um, we you know, kept the same lines as before for uh, around Reed Hillview, uh, but that area that uh, I believe uh, uh, Commissioner, uh, um, I don't have my names up, uh, that, that um, one of the earlier commissioners, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm forgetting names of all, everyone on the commission, uh, had mentioned around Ocala Middle School. We did add that neighborhood around Ocala Middle School. Otherwise, the, the lines of District 8 are, are the same. Uh, we did, I think in previous uh, commission, uh, we had the conversation, Commissioner uh, Alvarez, around the city attorney uh, not allowing us to include as contiguous this part uh, that used to be a district eight uh, further into Coyote Valley. We would like to include that uh, yeah. if, the, uh, if the city attorney uh, would say that that is something we could do under the Fair Maps Act. So we would love to be able to do that, but have been advised otherwise. No, I know you can't do it. I looked yeah. into it myself, uh, but I'm still, I'm still, I'm still concerned that we lost population. We had already lost population, and this uh, negative one point seven two percent. I, I think also the data set in in this mapping of the what I have up right now while we're we're quoting uh, data from elsewhere. It, it may it, there may be some differences uh, uh, there with that, that maybe that's popping up. I'm not sure. Um, it's really just that Ocala Middle School uh, that we are, are taking off, which is only a couple of hundred residents. And then we're adding, I think it's like a little bit north of a thousand residents in the foothills. So I'm not sure there's a major population loss, uh, but, but I understand the, the, the concern if that was the case. So, Thank you. yeah. Commissioner Dilvison. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Buchanan. Nice to see you again. Thanks for the follow-up presentation. Uh, a few questions. One, um, I have a letter that I read today from the Willow Glen Neighborhood Association that indicated no outreach has been made to them. Uh, I believe I asked you that question last time, and I just wanted to confirm whether or not that, that had been done in, since the last time we met. And yeah. the same question with Vendome, please. 
Yeah, so uh, I reached out to the Vendome Association right after our meeting um, and got an email this, I guess this morning from their association leader, you know, with making some strange accusations and saying that they didn't want to have a conversation. Um, so, so that was unfortunate, um, but, you know, we would still obviously be open to, to having a conversation. Uh, we, we reached out to some Willow Glen residents. I wasn't able to get a hold of anyone from the association. We have talked to a lot of District 6 residents, I would say, in, in recent weeks. Uh, the North Willow Glen uh, Association uh, supports the C4 map, uh, which is a version of our map. I was able to get a hold of some membership there. Um, and, you know, we've been having conversations with Shasta Hanshaw and other parts of the folks in the Rose Garden, other parts of the district. I just haven't gotten a hold of the Willow Glen Association. So, uh, I mean, I'm glad to have a conversation with anybody uh, about things. I understand that they have a difference of perspective. They want to move the line further south uh, than exists today. We think it may make sense to move it a little further north. Um, regardless, it's Willow Glen's going to be divided. And so where are we dividing it? Well, okay, that's an interesting point and it kind of dovetails nicely because you, you, I was listening very carefully to your presentation and you made the comment that we shouldn't split up Communications Hill because that's a community of interest and that's not what we should do. Well, I mean, I've got, I've got 200 pages of email correspondence from District 6 residents telling me and the commission they do not want us to split up Willow Glen and in fact what they want is basically for the southern boundary to remain intact, which as far as I can tell, is basically my duty to try to effectuate, given they're the community of interest. And this is the testimony that I've received now over a period of months. So I'm curious how you reconcile not splitting up Communications Hill, but being able to basically split up this very sizable area of Willow Glen that has been intact for years. I mean, decades. Willow Glen was its own city, for you know, for Pete's sake. So I'm, I'm interested to hear how you reconcile those two things. I appreciate the comment. Um, so. I think it's important to remember that today Willow Glen is divided. The Willow Glen Neighborhood Association currently sits between District 9 and District 6. It sits between District 9 and District 6. It's not united. It, it hasn't been united. I'm not sure if been uh, going back when it may have been united, but it's not united. And so arbitrarily where we move that line any way you slice it, that community is, 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 I don't believe there's a way to include the entirety of the neighborhood association into one district. And so if it's gonna be divided, it's a question of where the line is. So we're not dividing that community, it's already divided. We're choosing a different place to make the line of division um, because I don't believe there's a way to include all of Willow Glen in a single district. I haven't seen a map yet that, that does that. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Maybe there is a map and I've missed that point. I haven't been able to get the shape files for every map. But well, I mean, respect, respectfully, I mean, I think what they, what's being communicated through the, again, hundreds of pages of community interest testimony that I've got in front of me is that they look at Willow Glen as where it is currently situated. The recommendations that we're getting from people is that they don't want the Southern boundary moved because that moves what they consider to be Willow Glen. Um, and so again, I'm just, I'm just, if you look at that map, I mean, I don't think there's any way for somebody to basically say with a straight face that that is not a massive change to the District 6 Southern Boundary. And in particular, when you look at how it peninsulas down, like I've referenced before into the state of Florida, and so when you say things again, like redistricting is about people, I 100% agree with you. And I applaud you for getting together with people and putting together a map. I just respectfully put to you that the people who I'm hearing from, the people who are submitting substantive information to me from my district is in stark conflict with what you suggest. And so I hope there's nobody here that takes offense to the fact that I continue to strongly oppose this district line, just with respect to my district. I don't really have any other comment on the other on the other lines, um, but what you've done to district six without any dialogue with the largest association that's being split, given your other comments, I just have a difficult time accepting that. So, but I appreciate your presentation again. Yeah, thank, thank you for the comment. Yeah, I think in the last week and a half, we've had uh, over 150 uh, letters uh, around communities of interest 
supporting the unity map. Um, so just to say there, there are a lot of people in this community that are very interested in, in this set of lines as well. But I appreciate the agree to disagree uh, uh, on, on this one. All right. Um, well, thank you, gentlemen, very much for your presentation. Um, we are going to move on to the next uh, presenter. Um, I have Wolfram Schneider. Yes, hello, this is Wolfram Schneider. Can you please also unmute Nathan Olsch? Nathan is already in as a panelist. He can okay. unmute himself. And so both of you have the ability to share screen and unmute. Can you see the screen? Yes. Okay, so my name is Wolfram Schneider. I'm a member of the PIVIT board and the downtown parking board. I want to say that I speak here as an individual, not as a representative of either of the boards. There were no board meetings which discussed uh, redistricting. We also have uh, Nathan Ulsch, who is the director of policy and operation in uh, the San, San Jose Downtown Association. And uh, also included in our little group was uh, Chloe Ship and Julie Pollitt. We all also reached out to some of the neighborhoods and here is our proposal for the downtown map. So as an ex executive summary, as considerations, we looked at the current definitions and areas as approved by San Jose City Council. We found three documents. One is the San Jose Downtown Vision, San Jose Envision 2040 General Plan and the Deridon Station Area Plan. We also were looking for alignment with existing organizations like the San Jose Downtown Association, PBIT Groundworks, and our sister organization, the San Jose Downtown Residents Association, and also some community neighborhoods like Paseo Plaza, like you know some other of the uh, downtown HOAs. We also looked into public feedback and also the commission's attempt to include neighborhoods south of Highway 280, which speaks uh, also to we did an evaluation there and I can share the results later. As a conclusion, when looking at the maps C3 and C4, which was proposed last time only for District 3, Plan C3 aligns quite well. And I also looked at Plan D. Plan D also aligns quite well. Plan C4 splits our downtown totally into two districts. And you see an example. As a recommendation, we plan or we suggest to use plan C3 as it pertains to district three. We also can use plan D, which we saw today. And uh, the only thing what we need to do is add a little area in the Diridon station area and the south tip of Delmas Park. We also uh, identified there's a little island south of the airport like the community map was uh, referring to. We also saw you already added little Portugal. And what we found is the area south of 280 are not feasible due to the high population. So the city of San Jose downtown vision, this is online, you can download this brochure. This uh, shows exactly, you know, the borders of uh, the downtown district. And discovered uh, San, San Jose downtown describes five districts which are also falling in the same boundaries. Plan C3 keeps everything in B3. Plan C4, meaning the community map splits downtown in half. This is the out of this brochure. Here you see the borders as defined by the city. You see here up uh, St. James Park. You see it goes down, goes over to Diridon Station. So Diridon Station is part of downtown. It goes all across to uh, down here, Children's Discovery Museum, goes over to the university and then back to St. James Park. So it has a little, you know, two uh, squares on top of each other. You also see, you know, all the areas which are listed in the brochure which falls into that uh, area. Here you see a comparison between downtown for plan C3 and C4. You see in uh, C3, everything is nicely together except what's missing is the Diridon area station. And you see this is the borders which I showed you earlier 
just the kind of you know drawn out here. When you overlay the same borders to the plan C4, you see the big split where you split off whole neighborhoods which are belonging together, which are working together, which live together. So this is really a kind of very impressive uh, comparison because it shows C4 is not working for downtown. Then the city of San Jose Diridon Station Area Plan, it was referred earlier about, you know, Google Town is coming. Here you see Diridon Station, and here in this area will be Google Town. So when we look at this, this is also on the city's website. You can uh, click on these links and you see all the reference documents. Plan C3 is a good start, but needs to add Diridon Station and the south tip of Delmas Park. Plan C4 does not include Delmas Park neighborhood. Then city of San Jose, as I mentioned, I'm on the downtown parking board. Here is the map of you know, the downtown parking. This is an official commission or an official committee in San Jose. It's addressing discussions about downtown parking issues. And uh, plan C3, again, keeps everything in D3. Plan C4 splits it into two different districts. So some of the city owned parking garages are in district uh, three, others are in district six. And the same thing for privately operated uh, parking garages. Then PBIT groundwork. San Jose has uh, the PBIT, which is the property-based improvement district. This is, you know, from their website, you can look into it again in more detail. Groundworks is probably the most visible arm of uh, PBIT, which is doing ambassador programs, cleaning. Uh, they also do the, the wall murals, crosswalk decor, lighting. This is the district, uh, sorry, the PBIT area. And plan C3 is a good start, but again, you need to add, you know, Diridon station because that's in there too. Here's Diridon station in this area. Plan C4 fractures also PBIT and groundwork services in two different districts. We also know BART extension is coming. So when you look at this, BART starts at the Little Portugal station. So it's good that Little Portugal will fall into or is proposed to fall into the same D3 area. Then you have, you know, a station here at San, uh, Santa Clara and First, and again, you know, Diridon Station. So if you do this little adjustment of adding Diridon Station, you have the entire construction area from uh, BART in the same district. So our proposal is adding Diridon Station, and here we talk about, you know, numbers and specific areas. All we are looking for, extending Stockton Street, which is the existing border, goes straight down to Diridon Station and this little arm here as well. This is a population of 412 people, so it's not really affecting high populated areas. It leaves, you know, uh, Plan 51, Cahill Park, in D6, where they should be. And another area what uh, is needed, and this is more for Google, uh, downtown, uh, sorry, Google Town, you see if you add this little area, you cover also the entire Google development in the future. Otherwise, you cut it off about here. So there will be a little piece, you know, again in a different district. We already talked about, you know, Little Portugal. I don't need to mention this, but this is again, you know, the proposal. You see uh, just the business part of it. And this is this little island, what I was talking about earlier. This is in D3 right now, and it actually logically would belong to D6 because when you look at it, here is the train tracks. So this is really isolated from uh, the rest of D3. And in the neighborhood, you have you know D6, and then on the other side, you have the city of Santa Clara. So if you add this little population you know, back to, you would unite them with a new whole neighborhood. So again, our proposal is, you know, to modify plan C3, or we also know, uh, know that the community map, which was presented today, would be suitable. Uh, plan D, what you presented, plan D2, all would fit very well, you know, with the uh, existing proposal, what we have. The only thing what we would need is, you know, adding this little notch here. And this is about 800 people. So the map can be found online. We also looked at the overall population. It would be slightly underpopulated compared to other districts. And the ethnicity distribution is very close to plan C4. So I have it, if you want to see it, I have you know, the, the website open with this plan there. You can see we have a high 
Hispanic population in this uh, D3 map. We have as an appendix, if, the, if you're interested, this is just additional maps and also the populations of neighborhoods south uh, to 80, maybe I show the next slide for uh, Commissioner Berrigan. So it was mentioned, we talk about, you know, 15, 16,000 people, which you would have to keep together. We know that the uh, San Jose State has, you know, the South Campus in down in uh, Spartan Keys. However, we were doing some outreach to the, uh, university. We have no official statement from them, but what we heard so far, they are more interested in keeping downtown together rather than, you know, uh, being united with our South Campus because this is a little bit isolated anyway. Any questions? Um, thank you very much for, for that presentation. I particularly appreciated the the detail and um, some of your explanations on, on why you uh, drew your map the way it is. Um, is there a slide, I'm sorry if I missed it, um, you mentioned the groundwork services and how your, your map covers that. Is there, did you have a slide showing that? Yes, here's the, here's the groundworks area. This is PVID and groundworks. So I have Nathan Ols also unmuted, and he uh, probably can uh, explain a little bit better about groundworks and PVID and how you know the issues are. Thank you, Wolfram, for the presentation. Good afternoon or evening, excuse me, uh, commissioners and chair. My name is Nathan Ols, the director of policy and operations at the San Jose Downtown Association, and our PVID uh, works as a function of assessing property owners. Um, through a self-imposed assessment. And through that, uh, part of our operations is to utilize those fees, if you will, to provide services to our downtown uh, businesses, property owners, and residents in the area. So we are contracted with a company called Block, excuse me, Block by Block, and they provide uh, services such as ambassadors that walk people to their vehicles, provide directions, but also in addition, uh, clean our streets and make sure that they're safe uh, for our folks to walk around. And part of that is keeping um, the businesses uh, as well as the residents uh, together in this sense. And as we are talking with our council member, uh, this is one of the components that, that we really are cognizant of as we're moving through this trajectory of the next 10 years is there's gonna be massive growth coming in to downtown. Theoretically, nothing's, uh, we, we all know once things go towards development, it may or may not happen. However, if we're looking at uh, C4 and C3, uh, what we don't wanna do is go through a, a divisive downtown. And there's some maps that actually cut our downtown in half, like the Sofa District and so forth, that uh, represents uh, our, our business and property owners, but also our residents in the area. So in, you know, theoretically in 10 years, we're gonna see a massive increase in influx of, of residents in the area. What we don't want is to create uh, boundaries that might not reflect what would be in 10 years uh, by virtue of growth in, in the downtown. So I will pause there for the time being, but happy to answer questions. So let me just add to what Nathan is saying. When you look here, Stockton, this is D6, and here is D3. And you see, you know, the PV area ranges over, over here. It goes into City Hall. So, you know, of course, here is SOFA district. So again, you know, what you saw earlier about, you know, fracturing downtown, you know, you, you've, you totally take off, you know, uh, SOFA district, which is part of PVID. And of course you take off city hall, which is also, you know, part of uh, the PVID district. So what we found when we looked at this analysis, you know, even official city documents and publications on the website, they clearly define what downtown is and clearly define certain areas. And we are very, very concerned that, you know, the plan C4 is totally fracturing our downtown. So you have to have that definitely in consideration when you move forward. And it would be nice if you also could, you know, add, you know, this little area because this would complete, you know, what's already published. And of course, as I said, it's only a few residents, so it's not really high populated areas. Uh, commissioners, any questions on this presentation? I see no hands. Thank you very much. 
Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. Hey, I have Madam a clerk. Do we have any other? Yeah, I have two more um, who are sharing maps that I know of. Um, Elizabeth followed by David. Okay, Elizabeth, I hear, I think I hear you faintly, but it's, it's, you're barely audible and I have my volume at maximum. Okay, let's see. Is this any better? Barely no? better. Barely better. Oh. I mean, we can hear you, but I, again, I'm at maximum. Uh, okay. Let me go down with the microphone. Hello, is this any better? Very much, thank you. Okay, so um, yes, I'm here speaking for the San Jose Downtown Residents Association. And uh, you heard from our sister organization, the Downtown Association, which represents the business side of things. And you will see that the sound of maps by the end of proposal will have an even more dramatic effect for the resident side, at least for our residents association. Okay, so we are a resident association, a neighborhood association that have existed since the late 1990s. So we've been around for several decades and we are an integrated and active community working together, mostly through the vertical downtown buildings. Uh, we have uh, many events every year and I'm listing some of these here. And for your reference, it's part of it. So we, our boundary to the north is Julian, to the east is 4th Street, which is kind of borders San Jose State, to the south is Sinclair, and to the left is 87. Okay, so we uh, consider ourselves to be a community of shared interest. So we include the SJDRA area includes a contiguous population, which shares common social and economic interests that should be included within a single district for purposes of effective and fair representation. And California courts generally have accepted community of in common interest to include communities with similar economic interests, travel patterns, and geographic interests. So community of interest should go beyond just linguistic and ethnic lines, although those are indeed very important. So I'm here to uh, say that we oppose any proposals that splits the SJDRA into multiple jurisdictions, such as C4. Fair and effective representation is very important to us as the downtown core has been hit very hard by the pandemic. Anybody who walks around downtown before the pandemic and now will see that we need to work together, the residents and business to revive downtown. And we also have a public safety issue, which will tie us together, which may not be shared by other parts of D3 or other districts. And as the some of these maps that have been presented have shown, we believe that equity can be achieved without breaking us up. So this is, as I think some previous presenters saying, we are really presenting the personal side of what these breakup can be. And we support proposals, proposals that will allow us to remain together for fair and effective representations. And we also support proposals that are not mindful of natural boundaries, accountability, and communities of common interest. So without presenting another map for you to, uh, to, to consider, I will just say that we support the D3 proposal by our sister organization, San Jose Downtown Association. We also welcome other maps, such as the community map, which will address our concerns. And this uh, last slide shows you a very dramatic effect the C4 map will have on our residents' association. 
Um, so it divides pretty much into two halves along First Street. And like you have heard from the previous presenter, um, our boundary has always been considered to be the downtown core, any, any kind of city planning activities, and in any kind of downtown, it's hard to believe that even Market Street will be separated uh, into a different strict district from the right half of the Market Street. So I will just end here and um, be happy to answer questions. Uh, thank you um, for your uh, presentation, commissioners. Um, any questions for this presenter? I don't see any hands. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you. We, we have David Knoll. Good evening, commissioners. Let's see. I'll try to share my screen. You can hear me, right? Yes. Okay, so I'm here to talk about the south and um, eastern border of District 9 and the interface with District 10. And um, I wanted to start by thanking some people. Um, first of all, thanks to uh, Lenka for sharing news about this process on Nextdoor last week. That's when most of us first learned about this process. It's been quite a, uh, a hill to climb to, to get up to speed. I wanted to thank uh, Cheryl and Sonia. They taught me a lot. Um, and I wanted to um, say that I agree with their map. And I also like the fact that they've reached out to all the neighborhood association or to all the district's leaderships and um, you know, really tried to find out what um, works best for everybody. Um, and I wanted to thank our commissioner, um, BJ Fadham, for his comments too about um, trying to keep District 9, um, similar to the way it is now and preserving our neighborhoods. So um, I've presented, a, I'm presenting a, a couple of micro COIs and then a little bit larger COI. Um, in particular, on in my area, there's four neighborhoods that we want to keep together. We're one contiguous uh, residential area. And then there's also another similar neighborhood next to us called VEP Community Association. And then I would like to consider us as part of a little bit broader COI called um, Elmaden Blossom Hill, um, you know, the greater Elmaden Blossom Hill area. So this shows you the current District 9 and the four neighborhoods that we've decided to call uh, Four Corners, um, Branham, Pearl, Blossom, uh, Branham and Pearl Four Corners, which is Pearl here, Branham here, if Thousand Oaks, Pinehurst, Erickson, and uh, Tatra and Tanglewood are in this green section here. Um, it's actually, the, the mapping software actually combines this with Ericsson, but it's, it's really not. Um, the boundaries of District 9 work well for us now, and it seems like we could achieve um, rebalancing with minimal changes to these boundaries. I wanted to point out that over the last four years, we've worked painstakingly to, to build a District 9 leadership group. And that group is now fully functioning. About half or more of the board members live in this area here that is you know, potentially threatened with being moved out of the district and that could kill the leadership group that took so much volunteer work to put together. The second little COI, so where I was just talking about was over here, Thousand Oaks, Pinehurst, Erickson, Tatra, and Tanglewood. So VEP Community Association, I'm actually a past president of VEP. Uh, um, I'm currently president of Erickson Neighborhood Association, but before we had one, I got really involved with VEP because they're a very established association. They were formed in 1969, representing over 2,800 families. Uh, they were named after Vista Park, Encore, and Parkview, and a few other neighborhoods that all started with V, E, and P, and then they stopped adding initials. So, um, the uh, neighborhoods of Carson and Meadows are, and Parkview 
and Gunderson and Vista Park, these areas are all part of the region of, uh, of um, the EP Community Association. Over the past two or three re redistricting um, efforts in 2000, 2010, they had a very active member named Dave Fadness, who was a, um, a member of the commission and made sure that VEP stayed together in one district. So I'm, we're asking that they stay together still. Um, and I think that covers VEP pretty well. So I know this is a bit of an eye chart, but what I'm trying to show here is this is the corner of District 9. This is basically Almaden and Boston Hill, or sorry, this is uh, Highway 87 and Highway 85. And then District 10 kind of wraps around us from the south and to the north and um, almost reaches Communications Hill. And I think it actually would be a, a good fit for Communications Hill to be a growth area for District 10 because both District 10 and District 9 need to grow. But I'll leave that for others. Um, so what we have in common in our area are things that go pretty much north and south. So Almaden Expressway is a, naturally the most important corridor, one of the most important corridors in our area. The section from Blossom Hill to Branham is actually one of the most congested sections in the entire city, and it really needs to stay under one city council district. And then that one city council district member has to work with the county because it's a county road. Um, then along parallel with Almaden Expressway is the Guadalupe River, and uh, there's Guadalupe River Trail that's built up about to here, maybe Chenoweth, and its future growth is going to be going into the Erickson and Thousand Oaks area, and um, that trail has had a lot of uh, shared issues. There's a lot of cleanups done there. There's been a lot of fires, especially with the, the drought and the homeless. Um, it, it's an area that really needs to be, to have as, as few council members as possible to, to manage. You have District 10 up to a point and then District 9, but to also inject District 2 there would just make it really complicated. And, and again, we're gonna have master planning and, and work done to get the uh, trail built and it, as a, group of neighborhoods, we all want to work together. The other thing that goes north and south in our area is the San Jose Unified School District boundaries. So all of our elementary schools, middle schools, and high schools matriculated to each other and keep them in District 9 and District 10 makes a lot of sense. The other thing that's going to happen is that Blossom, this Blossom Hill corridor from about uh, Amadon Expressway to Highway 85 is um, zoned or planned in the general plan for urban villages. Those urban villages will be impacting District 10 below it and District 9 above it um, the most. And it would make sense for those two council districts to contain the urban villages and not have District 2 slide in in between the two of them and form a wedge right where the urban villages are going to be built. And then finally, this little spot right here says future TOD residential. That's the Branham and Capital light rail stations, which will be developed with um, medium to high density residential. These um, roads we all share in common. Hillsdale is a Vision Zero corridor. Branham is a Vision Zero corridor. Um, Pearl, which goes down the middle here, is getting um, treatment, safety treatments and, and a um, road diet that we will all share in its effects and, and trying to make it as effective as possible. Um, all, so we have Vision Zero corridors, we have the river and the trail, we have really congested roads, we've got urban villages, uh, transit-oriented developments. And then up here is where Narvez and Capital Expressway connect with Highway 87 North. That's gonna be an area that needs to get um, built out to improve the traffic there, especially for all the new residential that's coming in. So these are all things we have in common. So I only have one more slide, and this is the C4 map. So the same features laid over the C4 map. And you've got this claw coming around and grabbing you know, hit or miss neighborhoods in here. This is my neighborhood, Erickson. 
Um, this particular version has District 9 wrapping around here, but when you were doing live mapping at the last meeting, these were kind of coming and going. Um, it's This is going to be really complicated. You look at San Jose Unified School District being split among three council districts, Guadalupe River and Trail, three council districts, Allen Expressway, three council districts. We actually, a lot of our residents will take a, a walk or a bike ride from our neighborhood down to Elmwood and Lake Park. That would be three council districts, 1.7 miles. Um, again, the urban villages, we need the two council members that are most affected to be the ones to uh, work with the developments and, and make sure that they are the best they can be. And um, the one last point I wanted to say is that Hoffman via Monty, I believe part of the reason for all this um, land grab over here for District 2 is to go after Hoffman via Monty. The Hoffman via Monty neighborhood has been served very well by District 10 for the last 20 years at least, four council members that I've worked really closely with. They've got a dedicated staff member, the current and prior um, council members have dedicated staff members there. They've built up a neighborhood association that meets monthly, has monthly cleanups with 20 or 30 volunteers. I believe they had a, a child care center built, but I'm not sure. There's another medium density development coming on board soon that will uh, provide um, housing for foster children or post foster children and um, have a thousand foot community center that's available to the whole neighborhood. So. I don't think it would be fair to say that that neighborhood has been underrepresented or not had a voice. In fact, the council members have worked their best to create that voice and to form those neighborhood associations and keep them going. So that's what I'm trying to do is protect our neighborhoods of interest. I would like to keep District 9 changes to a minimum. I'd like to preserve our leadership group. I'd like to keep our four neighborhoods together. I'd like to let VEP continue to stay together and not be separated. And again, Carson and Meadows are part of VEP and a part of District 10, not District 9, as was shown in a different slide deck earlier today. And then you recognize that District 10's current boundaries are pretty good and they could move north towards Communications Hill. It would make a lot of sense because a lot of the traffic from Communications Hill also has to use the same roads that we're using, the same uh, Highway 87 entrance at Capitol and Narvez, um, the same roads that are having um, a sideshow activity down at uh, the bottom of Communication Hill and Hillsdale and uh, Communications Hill Boulevard. It's getting pilot project for um, traffic circles. All these things we, we share in common. So um, I'll stop there. And if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to address them. Thank you, uh, David, for for the presentation. Um, do you do you have um, numbers? Like, do you know what the population is in those um, neighborhoods that you're highlighting? I don't have those numbers on the maps here. Um, I bet Cheryl could show some numbers, but um, or we could show live if we went on district or. Um, you do have a map on Districtor. Um, I, I have some, I have several maps on Districtor. Well, if you want me to pop something. No, up. that's fine. We can do that later. We can do that later with with Chris and you know look at the numbers. I just was wondering if you had that. Um, no, so in general, Thanks. the community map that Cheryl has, Cheryl and Sonia have, um, map balance out quite nicely and they treat this whole area very well. So the, the population seems to work fine. Okay, thank you. Um, Commissioner Faden. Just briefly, because uh, Anadina asked my question, but I still wanted to let David know, I, I did read your uh, letter, it was very good. And I appreciate actually the maps um, because a lot of people don't understand when you talk about these, um, communities where they really are. So this map really helps to show why that portion of the uh, District 9 really needs to stay together. Um, we just need a little bit more growth. We don't need to take away from District 9. We just need to add a little bit. Yeah, thank you so much. Commissioner Wright. 
I also wanted to echo Commissioner Fadum's sentiments. Uh, thank you, David, for tonight's presentation. I also read your letter as well and appreciated the points that you made. I wanted to ask you if you've had a chance to look at the new maps of D as well as D2 that came out this week, and if you had any thoughts about how the boundaries were represented for District 9 and District 10. I saw them, um, frankly, there's so many maps and you never know. <laughs> I, don't, I haven't invested a lot into each one of them, but one of the D maps looked pretty good. Um, I think that was the D, not D2. And in, in our area, I think it was good. And in, in District 9, I think it had a pretty good Northern border and Southern border. Um, and then the other one that had District 6 moving a few blocks south into District 9, that's pushing that proverbial water balloon that's going to cause um, the only direction District 9 could grow is either into our neighborhood, which, you know, or into, spill into this um, traditional VEP neighborhood, or to um, go south um, of Blossom Hill into the Almaden Winery area, which is, as far as I know, has been served quite well by uh, District 10 for all these years. The, I think the current border is Highway 85. I, I think the current borders are working um, at the southern interface of District 9. I think the proposed borders with a minor tweak at, at the um, District 6, District 9 interface look good if, if you don't push too far south. Um, as far as the rest of the map, I, I really speak for my area. Great. Well, thank you so much. Any other questions, commissioners? All right. Thank you very much, David. Madam Clerk, was that our last presenter? I think so. Um, I'd like to go to, I'd like to allow Aurelia Sanchez to talk. Her hand was raised. She didn't let me know ahead of time she wanted to present a map, but I'm going to allow her to talk and she can tell us if she has a map to present or if she just wanted to make public comment. So Aurelia, are you there? Are you there? Okay, she's not. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, uh, my name's Aurelia Sanchez and I live in District 3 and I'm in the Spartan Keys neighborhood. Wait, ho hold on Aurelia, Are you, did you want to prevent, present a map or just a public comment? I just want to make a public comment. Okay, okay hold on just a second, you'll be next. Okay. Um, just want to let the chair um, do her, her thing. Yes, okay, thank you. Um, with the presentation completed, we'll, we'll now turn to receive public comment on item five, the draft maps. Um, so if you would uh, like to speak, please raise your hand. Um, you will have two minutes and the clerk will call on you. Hey, Aurelia, go ahead. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, you know, I'm kind of, I just jumped into this redistricting plan and um, I'm really surprised because Sonia Liu and Cher said that they reached out to my community, Spartan Keys. We do have a Spartan Keys Association, Rita Torres is the president, and they never communi communicated to the uh, community, either through email or through next door, that uh, they were contacted and that, if, you know, we anybody had any comments. I'm, I'm really, really surprised by what uh, Sonia Lu said. Uh, another thing I want to say is that I want I agreed with what Eddie Correa said earlier. When you start this process, it's kind of hard to comment because you don't. There's so much going on, you don't know what to comment because there's all these different plans. And I just want to also say that I prefer staying in District Three. Uh, I do not want Spartan Keys to be divided. Um, and if we are going to go to District 7, you need to keep Spartan Keys intact. You cannot divide us. As it is, we're going to go to a new district with established associations. We're kind of out in the corner. We're kind of like in the light industrial area. So you would be doing a huge harm to a large Hispanic working class neighborhood. 
So I want you to consider those factors. And I'm also concerned whether or not we could still be in the San Jose Unified School District. So again, um, I just want to comment. I'm really confused about the outreach. I'm going to be sending emails today uh, out to our association and to Dee Berrigan and to Sonia Liu. And I want the list, I, I want the names of who Tamwin. Thank you. Good evening, um, Chair and uh, the members of the Commission. Well, thank you for your hard work. I speak on behalf of myself, which is a longtime resident of the city of C7, and also on behalf of a Vivo community organization uh, through which we have uh, the opportunity to talk to lots of community members, especially the Vietnamese American. And with the four webinars that we, um, we in, in September, that we, we reached out to them, who provide a lot, lot of input into the community of uh, in, interest and other information. Uh, I think my, my, the chair of the organization had provided you with a member, with a, a map of the points of interest, our community interest, uh, which are, we had identified 14 of them. Uh, fortunately, they are well located within the district seven. So with, with that, we appreciate to keep that together where the community find common interests and uh, history and activity and supporting each other. So with that note, I would like to support the uh, unity map as modified. And I, I, I wish that we, in the future, we will uh, help the more community to participate in the uh, uh, process and uh, with the activity of South the City. With that, I thank you very much and I give my time. Rosie Zapetta. Hi, can you all hear me? Yes. Hi, I just want to, I really want to support Silicon um, Rising uh, map and, and just very briefly just share with all of you that the redistricting that you all have presented, I, I want to be more in support of Silicon Valley Rising because one, I think it splits uh, Latino uh, neighborhoods. It really disempowers them. Also on the Willow Glen side, it is really atrocious to not include the, the southern side and to really just leave a lot of those, those folks off. I, I know that Andrew spoke of what he's hearing, but I really, I really do think that we need to look at the map that Silicon Valley Rising has presented, which basically they spent a lot of time a lot of data uh, went into creating these maps. Um, you know, they're, they are a very respected institution. And I'm very quite concerned about the representation and really uh, oppressive and really suppressing voting for a lot of our Latinx and for our uh, Asian community. So that's all I have to say and I yield my time. Ms. Rayan Rivera. that hand went down. Um, and by the way, we have 35 hands up. Um, Todd Williams. Good evening. I wanted to um, speak out for the Vendome Neighborhood Association. I'm just a resident of that, but I don't think it's clear that the Vendome Neighborhood is attached to the downtown on the east side, it is First Street, which is a planned urban village. On the west side is the freeway, the Guadalupe River, Guadalupe Park, and a shopping mall. So we're very disconnected from, from uh, D6 that some maps are trying to push us into. Um, I think as far as the unity map, it would be very helpful if they did a current versus proposed because there's so many fingers and weird shapes that it would be interesting to see you know what has changed from what we have going and the guy that presented said he took offense to the public comment but then he started accusing others of 
something and I, do, I don't even want to go there, but I, I found all of that odd. Um, of all the maps, I was leaning towards the redistricting partners and the community map, but after tonight's presentation, I'd have to say that the community map explained the reasoning behind their need for the little changes they did and I'd have to throw my support behind them. They adjust from current districting. They don't split existing neighborhoods into different districts. They achieve an appropriate racial balancing and they maintain neighborhoods with common interests and especially keep the downtown core with surrounding neighborhoods, including the Vendome. Thank you very much. Barbara? Hi, thank you. Um, my name is Barbara Tech. I am the District 9 Leadership Group um, Interim Chair. I'm also a board member of the All Districts Leadership Group and also the president of the Tatra uh, Community Association. Um, I am here today to, to give my hand to the community, Matt uh, and uh, Cheryl and Sonia, who reached out to our neighborhoods, our leadership groups, had meetings with all with seven of the 10 uh, council, uh, district council uh, leadership group uh, leaders and worked for hours just helping us uh, work out each and every one of our districts and how we felt that we should be represented. Um, I am here to say that we would like to keep Tanglewood, Tatra, Erickson and Pinehurst and Thousand Oaks intact in D9. I am on the leadership group. Um, I've been serving on the board for three years it took three years to create the board. And if we were not to be in D9, then our board would not exist because three of our or six mem uh, executive board members are represented in these four, four neighborhoods. Um, we, uh, I am putting my support on the community map too. Uh, and I appreciate your time. Thank you. Rachel Daniels. Is it possible for me to, or for someone to pull up the D2 map or can I share that before I start my time? Um, do you have it ready to share on your screen? Yes. I'm gonna promote you to panelist. Okay. And I'll still run the timer. Well, if, I'll still run the timer, but it'll be in the background. I didn't hear what you said, something happened. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, share my screen. So, hopefully, okay, can you see that? Yes. Okay, so in district, we're in district nine here, the, this is the south border of district, or the border of district six and district nine. I'd like to talk about just these three little areas, this, this, and this. So I'm the president of Doer Neighborhood Association. Our borders run partner down to Meridian, let me zoom out again, Meridian down to Hillsdale up Lee. Um, so that block. So by you keeping cutting out these three, you're cutting three sections um, out of our neighborhood association. It, Kertner is a na more natural barrier given that's where it is. In addition, there's the Park Wilshire um, Improvement Association, which is an HOA that is housed within our neighborhood. And let me zoom in. It, its um, boundaries are Kurtner, Dumbarton, um, Balsa, which is right about here, if you can see my pointer, and back here. So it's a rectangle within our neighborhood association. Um, so that would also split. And that homeowners association, they pay dues and they you can only be a member of that. There's a community pool and stuff. You can only be a member if you're within that zone. So that would be dividing that um, Park Wilshire Improvement Association in addition to dividing the Neighborhood Association. So I would just like you to consider those factors when you're looking at the border for the map. Um, in this area right here, I was starting to do the map and I didn't do it fast enough, but this is 43 homes. Um, I believe this is 83 and 57 plus something else, <laughs> 57 plus 40. 97, a little over another 100. So that's the total of these, this, just these three sections. I'm not, since this is our border for our neighborhood association, that's all I'm speaking to is these three blocks right here. 
Thank you. Sandra Delvin. Yes, thank you, commissioners. And I really do appreciate all your time. Um, I do have a few comments. Uh, Community Map 2, they do have a racial uh, breakdown. And uh, my initial look, I did not see any voter suppression as was implied by one of the speakers. It would be great if we can have them also show that because they didn't show it when their presentation, if I'd been presenting it, I would have been very nervous too. Second, uh, during the meeting, it was implied that uh, efforts had been made to contact people in Willow Glen. I personally texted an officer of the Willow Glen Neighborhood Association. They say they have not been contacted by people on the unity map. So that still needs to be done. I believe the, uh, that was mentioned by Andrew, that question was answered or asked. So I want you to know they have not reached out. Um, I am concerned about um, all the things you guys have to balance. And I wanna wish you well in balancing all these items and, and taking all these inputs. I do feel that we need to be listening to people in the community. They may not have all the advantages of some of the other organizations presenting, but they do have passion for their community. Uh, the other I'm going to mention was, I believe that Cheryl said that she contacted San Jose State and had an unofficial answer that it was more important for San Jose State North Campus to be in there versus their um, South Campus. Um, being, uh, they would be okay if that might be in another district, but they felt that North Campus needed to stay within and be combined with everything in the community around that. That was my, what I heard. Thank you again. Good luck guys. Rah, rah. Mary Bitter. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, my name's Mary Bitter and I'm a board member on the Thousand Oaks Neighborhood Association. My focus is on keeping the Thousand Oaks, Erickson, Pinehurst, and Tanglewood Tatra neighborhoods together as a community of interest within a single council district nine so that we can continue to address our, commission, our common issues and challenges together. I urge you to keep, uh, we're calling it the Branham Pearl Four Corners uh, COI together. We are a contiguous residential area sharing San Jose Unified School District, Guadalupe River, the Future Trail, Pearl Avenue Library, Fire Station 13, Shopping, Dining, Almaden Expressway Corridor, Pearl, Branham, Hillsdale, um, and much more. Branham and Hillsdale are both Vision Zero corridors, and the Pearl Avenue is the process of getting similar safety improvements. We have a neighborhood associations and work together well. Some of our common issues are health and safety of the Guadalupe Creek, the traffic congestion on Albaden corridor between Branham and Blossom Hill, proposed safety improvements to Pearl, the road diet, and proposed urban villages on Branham, Narvez, and Blossom Hill. We need to minimally disrupt, we need minimal disruption to current maps that emphasize contiguous geographic areas that allow efficient and logical representation by local governments. Please don't assume that well-organized groups who were able to get high degree of participation in last meeting's public comment period represent the majority of residents who aren't even aware that the redistricting um, is happening due to lack of or minimal outreach. Um, districts with simple, compact, logical boundaries and minimal sprawl will generally be more efficient for council members and their staff to manage and result in higher constituent satisfaction and ability to serve increasing populations. And then lastly, minimize the disruption to ongoing work currently being done by the neighborhood associates. Matthew Cuvedo. Good evening, commission. My name is Matthew Cuvedo. Uh, thank you so much for all that you have been doing. I'm calling in tonight as a resident of the city of San Jose and as the current president of the VEP Community Association. Uh, your first ask is, of course, to encourage this commission to keep the VEP community whole. Really appreciate former president Dave Noel 
stepping in with his presentation and providing the background that is so important to the history of our neighborhood since its founding in 1969. Keeping together Carson, Vista Park, and Parkview is critical, uh, not only because of our history, but because of our future and the work we'll continue to do as a neighborhood, improving our parks, our infrastructure, and working with our neighbors and the leadership coalitions and connecting with our council members and elected officials. You know, there's a long standing history of many neighborhood associations, whether it's in District 10, District 3, or District 4, in that we've built up rapport with one another. We've built up neighborhood associations. We've been able to connect with one another in national night out events and community events um, that uh, many have dedicated their lives, such as uh, Mr. Fadness, who I dedicate these comments to, who was so focused on keeping our neighborhood together as we came together as one community. So really encourage this commission to continue with the great work you're doing, continue reaching out to the neighborhood associations and the neighborhood leaders, walk the neighborhoods, get out there and kind of understand the communities that you're representing and kind of gonna be calling for uh, the redistricting of these, these maps. So really appreciate you all again. And thank you so much uh, for the opportunity to speak. Well, Melissa Willett. No, we have 35 hands up. Um, hi, thank you. My name is Melissa, and um, I'm a resident of District 7. Uh, thank you for representing District 7, Mr. Sidbury there. And um, I'm going to keep it real. Like, we're maybe not as sophisticated, and you may not going to hear as many, like, neighborhood associations from District 7, but that doesn't mean our voices don't matter. We're a working-class um, neighborhood. And so I'm here to support the unity map because, you know, when we are working-class, it means that we have to keep in mind the fact that we have renters as a community of interest. Um, and we also have to be honest about the fact that in our city, the voice of black voters um, has grown and you know our maps have to reflect that. And we have to kind of take back our um, city of San Jose from like the long history of redlining and racism um, and displacement. And I think the unity map is the only map that does that. I also wanna zoom in a little bit to my neighborhood. I'm on South Side in Monterey. And when we're talking on South Side of Monterey, we're trying to make the Monterey corridor a sense of place where, and you can't do that if you switch, if you flip Monterey between two different districts, like half the across the street and half the across the street, it's not gonna work. And there's a massive community of interest with the building trades people that are on both sides of Monterey actually. And then when you were talking about Communications Hill, like my son, he goes to Andrew Hill High School and all his friends are across around Monterey Road. So when he walks with his friends home and stuff, we walk all the way to Lane Richardson Park where he plays basketball with all his friends. And that's a whole community of interest, including Communications Hill is all part of the Andrew Hill High School um, District. So um, I really like that. When people don't know where I live, I tell them, Hill, I live under Communications Hill. Because when I walk, look out my front door, when I look out my bedroom window, I see Communications Hill. So I think Communications Hill should stay in D7 and so should that little Monterey corridor um, up to Lane Richardson Park. I forget the street name, Montecito Vista, I think, something like that. Um, and it's really important that you support the Unity map because they do that. Thank you so much. Bob Brownstein. Good evening. Uh, my name is Bob Brownstein. I live in the Vendome neighborhood. I've lived here for about 25 years. I own a condominium. Uh, I'd like to speak in favor of the unity map. Uh, I feel very comfortable with expressing a community of interest with my many friends in District 6. Uh, District 6 is increasingly a diverse and young um, populated area. Um, when I talk to my friends in that district, they share my concern about solving the problems of homelessness. They share my concerns about increasing equity in the city of San Jose. Uh, I am totally comfortable with the notion of being uh, part of that district and continuing my close relationships with those people. For someone to say that I cannot have a community of interest with those people with whom I interact with significantly um, in my life is astonishing to me. That's substituting their speculation for the reality of my uh, regular um, living practice. So I urge you to support the unity map, um, and I think it will uh, be beneficial to both District 6 and to my neighborhood. Thank you very much for listening. Tim Clausen. Uh, 
Okay. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I'd like to start out with saying that I'm, I find it very offensive of the characterization that Jeffrey Buckingham um, stated tonight in tonight's meeting regarding my response to him. And so I just thought I'd like to read that response. And what I wrote was, Jeffrey, thank you for reaching out. Sorry for the delay, but I needed to run your email past BNA board members. At this time, we cannot support any redistricting map that aims to disrupt so many neighborhoods with its special interest agenda. We carefully reviewed the unity map and find it just does not keep existing districts together while meeting the character guidelines, the charter's guidelines. It has the appearance of a national movement rather than a grassroots effort by San Jose residents. We look forward to reviewing any changes made in last week's C3 map as well as the community map. Both work to unite and keep the neighborhoods uh, with common interests together with the least amount of disruptive and carving our city apart to meet special interest groups. FYI, the community map organizers were the only group that reached out to our neighborhood prior to submitting their map. Their map keeps most districts the same while meeting the requirements of redistricting and has no appearance of gerrymandering. Best of luck, Tim. Tim Clausen, VNA president. So being the president of the Vendome Neighborhood Association, the reason that I feel so strongly and our board does is because we want to keep the Vendome in D3 where we are working with the city in developing the transit village on North First Street, along with our neighbors in Japantown and Hensley. We have a river, as stated earlier, a freeway, highway, a mall, an airport. Ted Earl. Yes, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Ted Earl, and I'm the president of Thousand Oaks Neighborhood Association in District 9. I'm speaking to ask that you keep the Erickson, Thousand Oaks, Pinehurst, and Tanglewood Tatra neighborhoods together in District 9 as requested in the Branham Pearl Four Corners community interest maps. Uh, I support the community map uh, in the way that it treats my neighborhood and its objectives for minimizing the number of disrupted neighborhoods, forming compact, manageable districts with logical borders, and collaborating with neighborhood leaders throughout the city. Um, our four neighborhoods have many issues in common, and we've built strong relationships together over the many years um, and, our and our council office to address them. Uh, we've also helped build the District 9 leadership group that people have mentioned previously, which may not survive if our neighborhoods are moved out of D9. Uh, I want to put my weight behind and support everything that David Noel presented today. He did a fantastic job on outlining the issues um, and, and challenges as, as we see them. So I don't want to go through and, and you know rehash what he said, but um, I just want to make sure that uh, it's noted that I put 100% behind Dave. And I, I do have to comment that, you know, folks shouldn't assume that well-organized groups who are stacking public comment, you know, periods um, represent the majority of residents uh, who aren't even aware of redistricting lack to, and lack of uh, outreach. Uh, I just say that districts with simple, compact, logical boundaries and minimum sprawl will generally be more efficient for council members and their staff to manage and result in higher constituent participation. Thank you very much. I yield back the rest of my time. Annabelle Leva. Good evening, commissioners. Uh, my name is Annabelle Leva and I'm a lifelong East San Jose resident. I also serve my community through San Jose Bridge Communities, the grassroots organization where I work. And I just want to say that I appreciate all of the work that has gone into this process, bringing in most of East San Jose. And I especially appreciate that the commission hears the community. And just like many others who have spoken in favor and advocating for their communities to stay together, I also want to reiterate that it is very important to keep all of East San Jose together. Thank you so much for your time and all the work that you do. And I yield the rest of my time. Serene Kim. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Serene Kim, and I am the Community Outreach Coordinator at Korean American Community Services, otherwise known as CACS. 
which is located in West San Jose in District 6 of the City of San Jose. And CACs have been serving SJ residents for more than 42 years. And I would just like to say that I am in support of the unity map because it identifies fair representation for people of color, especially the API community. The unity map promotes fairness, ensuring that ethnic coalitions have an equal vote in their district and conforming to the Fair Maps Act and the California Voting Rights Act. The number of API populations grows rapidly within the city. However, the voices of API voters are not strong enough to represent, to represent themselves fairly. And so keeping and bringing communities and neighborhoods together that have similar communities of interest are very important. This map also keeps Asian American communities together and is mindful of each community with the broader API label. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to speak. Ben Vo. Hi, <clears throat> good evening, everybody. Um, thank you, commissioners, um, city staff, city clerk. Um, my name is Ben Vo. I am a San Jose resident. Um, I grew up in the Silver Creek area, went to Silver Creek High, go Raiders, um, and I'm here in support of the San Jose redistricting uh, unity map which will ensure that all of our votes have equal weight, each of our voices equal stature, and each of our communities equal resources. In our communities, we know that there are significant disparities and barriers preventing access to not just vital services, but also access to representation and power. Keeping neighborhoods together, conducting health assessments like the Vietnamese American one in 2011, and redressing the history of racist redlining in San Jose are some ways to promote equity and address the overall needs of our communities. I strongly support the unity map because it keeps the neighborhoods and community of San Jose whole. To create a more just city for our black, Latino, Asian, and indigenous neighbors, I urge you to support the unity map, like supervisors Chavez and Cortez did for the newly opened Vietnamese American Service Center, a resource hub in East San Jose that offers a wide range of services in Vietnamese and Spanish after studying that health assessment. To fully represent our unique communities, we need to bring them together. And our tight-knit communities lack the social cultural borders that distinguish other cities. And we need to do more than just balance populations. That is why I'm in support of the unity map. Thank you for your time. And I really guess my time. Maria. Maria. Hi, my name is Maria Rocha. Um, thank you, commissioners, for this evening, for this time um, that you have given us here. Um, so I'm just here uh, in support of, uh, my name is Maria Rocha, like I said, and I would like to express my concern this evening for the Latino community who cannot be here this evening. I know a lot of people would be uh, very interested in, in knowing about this, the Latino community. But I know that a lot of people have not been able to get the opportunity, and I thank you for that. I'm here in the support um, of the San Jose Redistricting redist Unity Map. I believe that we need to bring more communities together. Growing up in San Jose, I grew up less fortunate than other classmates, so I understand the importance of, of, of this map. And I know that San Jose has had a huge history of racism, which accompanies with our current lines, both for neighborhoods and also therefore elections. The commission must consider our history as a determinant for how we draw these lines or we are doing harm and disfavor to our communities of interest who have most certainly been shaped by this racism. I thank you for your time. Cher? Hi, yes, I have two comments. The first thing is I would like to know why the C3 map was withheld from the republic, from the public. The C2, C3, C4 were supposed to be given out on the 13th of October. Only the C4 was correct. I complained for five days that the C3 was the same as the C2 and we did not have the data. The C3 came out five days later. Willow Glen Neighborhood Association made their vote in favor of C4 without having the opportunity to see the C3 map. It was withheld from us for five days. So that Willow Glen Neighborhood Association gave their statement at 8.18 a.m. on the 18th, and we did not get finally get that corrected C3 map till later in that day. So that is not fair. I want to know why that was withheld. 
And the other thing is regarding this accusation of voter suppression in District 5, I want to say District 5 with our community map remains at 6.1% white. It is still 56% Hispanic. Where is the voter suppression? The black community all across is the same percentages, all exactly the, almost exactly the same from our community map to the existing things. And the white population in District 3 stays exactly the same. It's still majority Hispanic. Where is the voter suppression? Who's doing the suppressing? The same thing in District 7. The white population actually goes down a little bit. I would like to know who it is and who you think and why these accusations of our map being voter suppression and where is this voter suppression coming from? Because I look at the data and I don't see it. I hope somebody can tell me where they think that's coming from. Thank you. Madison Beckett. Hi, yeah, good evening. My name is Madison Beckett. I'm a resident of District 4 and am in support of the Unity Map. Um, it greatly concerns me that the community map reduces the population and heavily populated Latino districts as much as 7.8%. There's some previous comments that spoke in support of the community map, you know, saying it maintained neighborhood, it was traditional, efficient, and logical. I think that's an extremely problematic way of thinking that blatantly and obviously ignores the history of redlining, displacement, and inequality in San Jose. I believe there needs to be an intentional effort at restoring equity. And that should be a vastly higher priority than maintaining um, neighborhoods out of tradition and efficiency. Um, you know, there should not be any attempts to dilute the community vote that's already historically and currently under is uh, underrepresented. The unity map was drafted by civil right and community leaders who have years of experience living in San Jose. There, we're at a time where there's such deliberate voter suppression and San Jose needs to make the effort to promote equity to its residents. You know, I'm a resident of San Jose District 4, currently District 1, and I'm strongly in support of the unity map. Bob Jamillo. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Um, I am co-vice president of Thousand Oaks Neighborhood Association. I've lived in the neighborhood for 41 years and you are tasked with a huge job here and you have a lot of respect from me and from, from I think all of these people. Um, but um, I want to support Dave Noel in what he represented it and his maps and his presentation were great. We're a large spread out city with many bedroom communities, Thousand Oaks, Pinehurst, Erickson, Tatra and Tanglewood from Form, Pearl and Branham Four Corners as noted on the COI map and testimony we submitted. We are a contiguous residential area linked by many co commonalities our proximity to Pearl Avenue, the Almaden Expressway corridor between Blossom Hill and Branham makes it essential that we are contained within a single council district. Joint, joint communities that work together, especially with our local government should remain in a cohesive group. Keeping the four corners with uh, District 9 allows us the opportunity to continue building on the extensive work we have already begun. Districts with simple, compact, logical boundaries will be more efficient for council members to manage. I respectfully hope you will uh, consider maintaining the connectivity of the Pearl and Branham Four Corners neighborhoods. And that uh, the redistricting will closely resemble the community maps which achieve the necessary balance through minimum change. Thank you for your time. Rosa Vargas, um, and I believe she's an interpreter the last time. So to hear her comments, please switch over to the Spanish channel. Go ahead, Rosa. Uh, buenas noches. Mi nombre es Rosa Vargas. Soy, soy una trabajadora de comida rápida de San Jose. Y líder en la lucha de, por 15 y un sindicato. 
Vivo, vivo aquí en San José, vecindario en el que, en el que vivimos. Yo apoyo el mapa de, un, de unidad. Yo apoyo el mapa de unidad porque el mapa de, vani, de, 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 de unidad prevalece la equidad a, a seguir siendo que las coaliciones étnicas tengan un voto de igual, igual, igualitario en sus distritos y cumplen con, con la ley de mapas justos y la ley de, 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 de eleva, ele, electorales de California. Por ejemplo, empodera a la, a la comunidad de gente negra que ya ha sido devastada por el desplazamiento y garantizo una mejor representación de nuestras publicaciones asiáticas y latinas. Un distrito más representativo para los trabajadores significa mejores oportunidades de apoyo para nuestra comunidad. Eso es todo. Muchas gracias. Irene Smith. Hi, I don't know why um, my name is showing up as Irene. That's um, this is Marnie Camson, and I want to thank you um, to the commissioners for your time and to all the presenters. And I can't see the clock, and that's a problem. Um, the classic definition of gerrymandering is to manipulate the boundaries of an electoral of an electoral constituency so as to favor one party or class. Another definition is a practice of dividing or arranging a territorial unit into election districts in a way that gives one political party, party an unfair advantage in elections. The initial unity letter to the commission said, and this is a quote, we decided it was important as groups representing the diversity of the city to try to work together to produce a unity map as a way to bring together communities of interest and build a consensus. They then produced a map that had little continuity and contiguity and dissected existing communities of interest. So the stated goal was to bring communities together, but the priority of the redistricting process is to keep communities together if they have history and relationships together. Community relationships take years to build and should not be separated. Any changes to districts needs to adhere to the legal requirements of, dis of redistricting. I was also very upset by the accusations, accus accusing another presenter of voter present, uh, sorry, accusing another presenter of voter suppression is a great illustration of the adage that the best defense is a good offense. In my opinion, the presenters really did their cause a disservice with that sort of aggressive and unfounded accusation. I support the community map. I also commend the commissioners for putting in so much time and energy and working so late at night. George Sanchez. George. Uh, good evening, commissioners. Uh, first of all, thank you all for the important work that you're doing. My name is George Sanchez, and I, I am a school board member for the Franklin McKinley School District. As some of you are aware, 
The Seven Trees neighborhood is a very special area of San Jose. The schools in this area belong to our district. It very much falls under a community of interest based on the criteria that you are using. It would be indeed tragic if you were to split this neighborhood into different council districts. It belongs in Council District 7, where it has been during the past several decades. Therefore, I would highly encourage this commission to keep Seven Trees intact and an integral part of Council District 7. Thank you very much. Miss Miss Rain Rivera. And Miss Rain, uh, your uh, Zoom is out of is out of date, so we're going to promote you to panelist for your turn. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Hi. How are you? Uh, thank you for your time. My my name is uh, Miss Rain Mendoza Rivera, and I'm a long time resident of San Jose. And I'm here uh, in support of the unity map. I believe that uh, as a whole map, it, it shows the unity. It, it's just the name, right, of it. So it shows the unity and, and it keeps everything as a whole. And also um, it gives us a, 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 a just in fighting chance to keep our voices heard. For those said that the, uh, we trying to suppress anybody, uh, we're not suppressing anybody. We're rising for the suppression people here, okay? Listen to this. We're not suppressing anybody. We are trying to get off. We wanna have everything that everybody else has. And I don't see what the big deal is about here because we need to come together. And I think this map gives everything, okay? And, and uh, if people doesn't understand their outreach, I have done a lot of outreach and it takes a lot to, to get to people. But I believe these people did a good job trying to reach to people and also too, it's not about their reach. We need to be informed of what's going on in our communities. And you guys that have so many associations and this and that, whatever, you guys should be informed of what's going on, okay? And yeah, we're not suppressing anybody. I wanna make clear of that. We're rising, okay, to the occasion of being suppressed for many, many, many years. As a gay man, as a brown man, I'm in, and I'm in support of my black community and my Asian community over here in District 7. Thank you very much for your time. Leonardo Moreno. Uh, hi, good evening. Uh, just want to say, we're interested in keeping East San Jose together. I saw a good job at bringing in most of East San Jose in the draft maps that were presented tonight. And we appreciate that the commission heard the community. And just want to reiterate, keep East San Jose together and please support the unity map. That's all I, I yield my time. Maria Canito. Maria. You're unmuted, but we can't hear you. Okay, I'm going to move to the next person. Uh, Maria, raise your hand again if you can get your microphone fixed. Yuritza Martinez. Hi, my name is Yuritza. Um, I'm a West San Jose resident. I'm here also to support uh, of the San Jose redistricting unity map, which will ensure all of our votes have equal weight, um, equal stature in our voices also, and even equal resources in each of our uh, communities. The SJ unity map increases the representation of Latino, Asian, Black residents um, and the renters significantly per district and the unity map also keeps the community together. Um, during the redistricting process in 2010, for example, the community came together to demand all of the various neighborhood be incorporated into one council district. And it would be unfair to go back to splitting and dividing our communities now. Uh, we need to bring and keep together uh, to create more equitable and just city for our Black, Latino, Asian, and Indigenous neighbors. Sorry, neighbor, neighbors, 
um, that we know have never, it has never happened efficiently. Um, the unity map is more than balancing populations. Um, it is uniting communities and families, and we should step up to make that happen. I also wanted to address um, whoever said that the unity map was only benefiting special interest communities. Um, I disagree. I don't think that there are special interest. I think it's communities that have never been of interest because they are minorities. And it sounds like they don't want to support it because it doesn't benefit their community necessarily, um, not because it doesn't necessarily uh, benefit the community as a whole. Um, and we cannot keep our communities together, which are minority communities, if they were never together to begin with. Thank you. Felwina, Fel sorry. Um, yes, good evening, commissioners. My name is um, Felwina. I'm with the Filipino Association of Workers and Immigrants, or PAWIS, and I'm also a resident in District 4. I am here tonight to manifest my support for the most updated Santa Clara County redistricting unity map as it redraws lines to preserve communities together and to empower our Black, Brown, and Asian communities. Also, as a resident in the Berries, uh, North San Jose Penitentia area, um, it is uh, of particular interest to me that the Berryessa um, community will not go back to being split. And, um, and the community map is, is equitable and ensures a multiracial consensus for the betterment of our county. Um, thank you, and I yield my time. Hector Hernandez. Yes, hello, hi. Uh, hi, I'm a District 5 resident uh, of East San Jose, and I would like to show my support for the unity map. So all the voices that have been ignored in the past can be heard, especially the ones of people of people of color and working class communities. Thank you, I give my time. Ruth Silver Taub. Um, good evening, commissioners. And thank you for your work on redistricting. I'm a supervising attorney at the Alexander Community Law Center that's part of Santa Clara University um, and School of Law, and it's at 1030 the Alameda in San Jose. Because of the historic redlining and racism in San Jose, Black, Brown, and Asian votes are diluted in the current districts. A coalition of civil rights and community groups have drafted unity map, the unity map to redress those inequities. The updated unity map is the only map that does not dilute the votes of Lat Latino residents in D3 and 5. Map C3, D, D2, and the community map decrease the Latino population in these districts and um, fail to bring together the communities of interest made up of Asian and Latino renters in D6 and D2. The unity map conforms to the Fair Maps Act and the California Voting Rights Act and provides fair representation to the black community. I urge you to adopt the unity map to promote fairness, to undo the legacy of redlining, to preserve neighborhoods and to give marginalized communities a voice. Thank you. Hector Moreno. Good evening, um, commissioners. Um, thank you for all your hard work you've done. Um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm Hector Moreno, lifelong resident of East San Jose. Um, I'm here to sh in support of the unity map. The unity map considers the growth of our city. It keeps East San Jose together, D8, D5, D7. The only proposed map that does this. The unity map also considers renters as a community of interest. So I'm here in support of the unity map. And for those people who say that we're suppressing them, well, we're just like the one of the people who spoke, um, we're not suppressing them. We're just speaking up and we're not staying quiet anymore. So thank you for your time and thank you for all your hard work. Um, and I yield the rest of my time. Marisol. Marisol.
Okay, I'm going to move on to Corey Quevedo. Hi, thank you. Um, I'm here in support of the unity map. Our democracy works best when it reflects all of our voices, no matter who we are, what we look like, or what's in our wallets. Yet across the country, we continue to see efforts to disenfranchise black and brown voters and weaken the political voice of working people and tenants. Now we have the opportunity to set the path forward for a region in which all of our voices are truly, truly count. Every 10 years, US Census data is used to redraw district boundaries. The districts we bought, the districts we draw this year will shape our lives and communities for the next, next decade. From how we will be represented politically to how we will fund our parks, hospitals, and other essential services. Thank you. Jay Bosley. Yes, my name is Jay Bosley. I'm the council representative for the Santa Clara San Benito County's Building and Construction Trades Council. We have 35,000 members in those two counties. Good many of them live within the city of San Jose. We support the unity map because they support the unity map. Thank you for your consideration. Tessa Woodmancy. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. You work so hard on all these meetings. You're amazing. Anyway, just nice to hear everybody's voice of the city of San Jose and all the neighborhoods and people really trying to, you know, uh, have unity in their neighborhood is, is so heartwarming to hear. And I, my idea of wanting to come to the, uh, the redistricting, even though I'm late to the meeting, was to talk more about like a hyper local um, neighborhoods. And as we hearing from everybody how, how attached they are to their neighborhood is, is like I said, um, is, is good news um, as we go forward. Because um, really, you know, as I was talking to Allery Middlebrook, who's really working on urban sustainability, that she sees that we could grow food um, locally and like looking at us as acres, you know, instead of looking at us as neighborhoods, but like acreage uh, to grow food locally as, as we need our um, cli climate resiliency and, and us as we're going forward, because actually it's actually looking at it to put into our charter um, the protection of the people um, from harm that the climate crisis will, will be um, presenting to us. And growing food and having a strong um, neighborhoods is gonna be very important for our survival. And so that's what I was looking at is trying to think about how we could have a much more, even, even more hyper-local neighborhoods or redistricting at a much more granular level as we try to uh, work together for, for our basic needs. And you know just something to think about maybe in the future redistricting that it becomes much more of a smaller neighborhoods that can work together um, to grow food and to provide for our basic needs together as a community, as we learn to live without fossil fuels and have to become much more hyper-local and that our survival really will be much more interdependent. So vote for the climate crisis in our charter. Krista De La Torre. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, hello, my name is Krista Dolatori and I'm here on behalf of the South, La uh, South Bay Labor Council to speak to the commission in support of the Unity Map. Um, the Unity Map will keep communities together and ensure that every San Jose City resident has a fair say in their representation. Unlike other maps, the Unity Map will not dilute the voices of working people or marginalized groups. It has been carefully thought out by civil rights and community leaders and continues to gain support from a diverse coalition of community stakeholders. Of the proposed maps, the UNI map will give working families, multifamily residents, and renters the best shot at fair representation in a city that has historically favored and prioritized the needs of homeowners. For instance, this map will connect multifamily neighborhoods along the I-85 corridor that have been poorly represented in the past, like Hoffman via Monte, for example. Um, this will work to diversify the electorate of former District 2. Uh, the uni map will also unite renters in the dense neighborhoods of downtown, central, and south San Jose, ensuring that the people in those areas are and their, and their voices are properly heard. Um, moreover, by conforming to the Fair Maps Act and the California Voting Rights Act, the uni map promotes fairness and ensures that various ethnic coalitions have an equal vote in their district. 
The Unity Map also works to address San Jose's history of redlining while keeping communities of interest together. This includes Fruitdale, the Rose Garden, College Park, Penitencia, Elm Rock, Berryessa, Evergreen, Silver Creek, Nagley Park, Little Saigon, Communications Hill, Seven Trees, and Willow Glen. Um, this map does not in any way gentrify San Jose at all. Um, not only is it compact with the easy to identify whole districts, but it fully considers, it, considers San Jose's unique boundaries and their intersection with unincorporated county land. Uh, simply put, the Unity Map is our city's best option. It understands how to keep communities of interest together, ensure equitability, and value the voice of every single San Jose city resident. Thank you. David? Good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, my name is David Acevedo. And as a San, Eastside San Jose resident, I'm here to support the Unity Map. Uh, uh, so far, um, with the drafts that have been provided, uh, uh, Eastside San Jose has been kept together. And as and again, in, in support of uh, Eastside San Jose staying together. And I want to just say that, um, you know, the Unity Map is bringing everybody together as, uh, so everybody can have a voice. And I think that's the key. I mean, everybody needs to have a voice. So I uh, appreciate the commission for the hard work they're doing. And I yield my time. Thank you. David Knoll. Hi, actually the only reason I was had my hand up was to say that um, Rachel Daniels was having trouble getting back on the meeting after she spoke. She um, accidentally got kicked off and then she couldn't get back in because she was set up as a speaker. Yes. We, we realized that immediately. I've been trying to get her back on. Um, if she signs on with a different email or a different phone number, she'll be able to get through. I can't unblock her until I end the meeting. Oh, okay. So I'm glad you, I'm actually, she might be on. Is that what you're saying? No, I, I, I think she tried using a different email and was, yeah, I don't know whether she got on or not. She can, you can tell her to watch it on YouTube, so she'll okay. still watch it, um, and we apologize for that. Okay. So you said try a different email or what? A different email or use the phone. Okay. All right. And then if she just wants to watch, she can also watch on YouTube. Okay. All right. Thanks. So, and we're, we're deeply sorry about that. Okay. Forrest? Hi, my name is Forrest Peterson. I have a PhD from Stanford Engineering. I teach uh, dual enrollment classes in virtual design and construction in the East Side. One of the topics that I teach my students is about redlining. And in redlining, I teach what goes with redlining is topics like the water in Flint, Michigan, which is environmental uh, justice. So my students come away from my class understanding that the world they live in, that they've grown up in and they look around and they see and they've known as the world they've always known is a, is a constructed world that's artificial. The effect of redlining is profound. You know, I'm born and raised in San Jose and it wasn't until I went to Stanford Engineering and became a researcher that then sharing with my colleagues, they pointed out to me that the world I grew up in that the communities that I thought of as the Latino community or the community I thought of as the white community, I grew up in a Latino community, but I spent a lot of time in uh, a white community, was a complete fabrication of redlining. Um, and when you bring up the maps, and I think it's important to show maybe what are the historical overlays of where the redlining is in San Jose, and then show where those boundaries are and how are we undoing that legacy of what has been done is wrong. Um, I think that's one of the things that some of the commentators have picked up on is, you know, some communities, you know, all respect to them are saying, hey, you're, you're pushing us around a little bit. But then remember, these same communities have been pushed around for over 100 years. So what we see right now today is not justice. This is injustice. And the, the goal is to create justice so of course something is going to change um change is never good so i want to leave it with that and i thank you uh for the opportunity to comment elizabeth kamya hi thank you commissioners uh for your time this evening 
Um, my name is Elizabeth Kamya, and I am the Chair of Economic Development and Labor with the San Jose um, Silicon Valley NAACP. Uh, the voices of Black voters, voters grow across the city, particularly in what was formerly D2 and what was formerly D6, an increase of a third in both cases. However, with so few Black Americans in our city due to what Forrest so well put, a long legacy of redlining, um, in addition to a legacy of racism in San Jose and displacement, uh, we should only support plans to grow the Black communities um, share the vote and the unity, unity map does this and i want to remind folks as i have a minute left uh that post george floyd immediately after there was a reckoning people were listening people were learning and then it stopped this is a chance to keep pushing to make sure that the lives that have died are not in vain this is a chance to make a change and change is never easy. And change might not be ideal for those folks that are living in affluent communities who are getting their services met. But you know what? There are so many people in San Jose who aren't. So many people who don't have privilege, who don't have the privilege that people do in these communities who are saying, not in my backyard. Well, you know what? Yes, it needs to, because it's time to level the playing field it's time to make a change. It's time to build a San Jose for all. And it's time to rise, as folks have said. Enough's enough. And a unity map can do this and so much more. Thank you. Bow true. Bow. Uh, sorry, I need to unmute. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, for calling. Um, dear Commissioner, and uh, I am about you. I am speaking on behalf of Vivo, the Vietnamese Voluntary Foundation, and uh, I would like to support the Unity Map. It is a map that's been drawn by uh, different uh, many uh, agencies together, many uh, Coalition together, the Asian Law, Law Alliance, the NAACP, San Jose Silicon Valley, the South Bay Labor Council, the Latino Leadership Alliance, and the Lara Roundtable, and other other many different groups. Um, is there a way to increase the representation of Latinx, Asian, Black, and Indigenous voters, renters, and working families? We believe that uh, these. Uh, um, population has been underrepresented in the council, and we would like to represent uh, more of uh, this uh, population at the city level. I have heard that there are other speakers uh, not agreeing with the unity map because it may divide their neighborhood. I do not believe that uh, whatever uh, the, the neighborhood that you have should still be continued if the neighborhood that uh, like uh, in downtown or Willow Glen that uh, already there, I believe that the neighborhood still can work together if uh, for their uh, for the common interest. And this would uh, represent, help us to all, um, as we say, Silicon Valley rising. This is all of us will be rising together. And this is not just one neighborhood against another neighborhood. Thank you very much for allowing to input and uh, have a good time. Eunice Chun. Hello, thank you commissioners for all your hard work. Um, my name is Eunice Chun as a district two resident and a leader of a community-based organization CACS in district six. I support Unity Map. Our organization has been serving local Korean and Asian American community members for more than 40 years in San Jose. We know the local community well, especially Asian Americans. The unity map increases the representation of Latino, Asian, and Black residents and renters significantly. I believe the unity map keeps each community of interest together best. It ensures that ethnic group of people have an equal voice in their district. Again, thank you for your work and consideration. 
Adriana Aloni. Good evening. My name is Adriana Garcia, and I live in what is known as Ohlone land. I am a Korean resident of District 7, particularly 7 Tree, and I also grew up in District 3. I'm a member of Santa Clara Wage Theft Coalition towards the end goal of ending wage theft. I'm also a member of MAIS. I'm here to support the unity map created by the NAACP, La Raza Roundtable, and Asian Law Alliance. This unity map is inclusive of BIPOC communities, for BIPOC communities, by BIPOC communities. It allows for just decision-making, fair resource allocation, and equitable political power that benefit generations to come. As a Chicana daughter of my grandparents from Zacatecas who decided to make San Jose their home, as a mother raising a biracial child, a third generation who's in love with San Jose, I want to be, make sure that he has representation in if he ever decides to make San Jose his home for him and his neighbors, that resources are allocated, funding is allocated to make sure that he has lights in the street, paved roads, cops who build community and prevent crime versus responding to crime through further militarization. All one has to do is check out a book and an article from the Sounds of Public Library to see the systemic xenophobic and racist legacy and funding by conservative uh, far-right racist uh, political uh, officials. The commissioners have an opportunity to make systemic change today, institutionalize social justice to ensure black and brown and indigenous people benefit for generations to come from this unity map. Thank you. Blair Beekman. Go ahead, Blair. Hi, Blair Beekman here. Sorry about that. Uh, thank you for considering uh, bringing the Ocala area into D5. Many people in this area have always felt a part of D5 for a long time now. Thank you for the words of a commissioner that it's going to be tough to figure out the future districting around the Gardner area. I have learned tonight and have grown concerned the ways of simple, neat, good adjustments of community maps may, may be cutting out important Latin and Asian populations. I was surprised to also learn tonight D6, D3, D4, uh, I've had an average of over 110,000 people in their districts. From the good words and good studies of the Unity Map people tonight, they are trying to address racial equity of D6 while also trying to address the previously overly large population of D6. Good luck in all our efforts and dialogue together. To ask, however, how much less racial representation will there be in the future of a smaller D6 and in not using the elephant snout of the Unity Map? Uh, personally, I'm interested in the East-West ideas of, of, of districting and equity and how D7 can actually move along Vine and Almond and pass the 280 to San Carlos and San Fernando so it can share the corners of D3 and D6 in the Gardner area and the future of Google Village. And then D7 can travel east up to 11th Street uh, and that can become a more natural fit for the San Jose State and surrounding Williams Reed neighborhoods area and a larger, more square D7 overall. This is a lot to take in and I'm sorry I'm a little flaky. I hope we can better consider a larger D7 and how it can be a good district for the Spartan Keys area and interestingly may address uh, concepts of neighborhood unity and equity better. Um, with 12 seconds, this can also help balance uh, D5 questions for D5 to be part of the little Portugal area and uh, it could be a part of this up upcoming BART station and D3 uh, can be- John Vu. Hi there, my name is John and I'm a resident of the current District 6 represented by Dev Davis. I'm not gonna comment on the unity map, but I do admire the passion. But reading through the co public comments submitted online, I can't believe any resident in the city of San Jose would disenfranchise any resident in our city. This person wrote, we are a Willow Glen resident and have lived on Creek Drive for 27 years. We backed up to the Guadalupe Creek and we bought one first VA neighborhoods in San Jose when we moved in and we met some of the original homeowners. They have mostly moved away or have passed, but we have long lived, loved living here. We remodeled the house six years after we purchased and started our family. We have roots in Willow Glen and are currently updating our home again. We have some, seen some redistricting maps showing our streets moving to another district and less desirable Monterey Corridor. We are actually a bit furious that the more affordable neighborhood of Willow Glen will be removed from the district and lumped in with less appealing neighborhoods, especially with the creek being a natural divider. 
We are a biracial family, and the thought of being removed from the Willow Glen district only furthered the divides with the haves and haves not in our area, and that is the most infuriating part. We are asking that you please do not divide the Willow Glen neighborhood, end quote. I'm just saying overall that being part of District 6 and seeing that from a Willow Glen resident makes me feel less happy to part of being this district. So therefore, I'm asking all of you to please, please follow all the federal, state, and local laws on how we redistrict and not buy into NIMBY, not in my backyard mentality that continues to dilute the voices of all citizens. Moreover, seeing those comments posted earlier really, really is disenfranchising all the residents of the city of San Jose. I know there's a lot of passion for the unity map, and I also know that, you know, there is a lot out there, but I ask the commissioners and the unity map to please look at the other map proposals, including the one from Greg Ripa on October 21st. Thank you so much for your time. Gabby? Oh, good evening. Thank you to, um, to the commissioners for the opportunity to talk. Uh, I am a current um, resident of the Ocala neighborhood, and I would just like to um, thank the Unity um, map uh, creators to reach out my neighborhood and to actually give a voice um, to our needs and um, understanding that, you know, the Ocala neighborhood has the Alam Rock Ocala Middle School and the Alam Rock uh, DCP Middle School. And um, we we don't um, recognize ourselves as being a part of the Evergreen area. So um, I, I appreciate them um, putting um, the Al Al Ocala neighborhood in the East San Jose. And I appreciate the commissioners also listening um, to us. And, um, and thank you, Commissioner. Um, Robert Martinez, I believe that's your name, who um, who actually listened um, to to us, and I appreciate um, you. Um, how do you call it? Also putting Ocala in one of the other maps. So thank you so much, Gabriella. Good evening, Commission. My name is Gabriella. Garcon Gupta, and I'm a resident of D9. I was born and raised in San Jose, and I support the Unity Map. Um, the Unity Map gives power to those that historically have not had power in San Jose. This is not limited to race, although there are notably race disparities when it comes to renter status and income. For example, along 85, the Unity Map puts together multifamily neighborhoods. This map empowers the historically underrepresented community of Black, Latinx, Indigenous, and Asian, and renters by about 1.5% per district. The unity map is a great balance of both the hard numbers and data and complying with the federal maps act and everything like that, while also considering the actual people that live in these neighborhoods. Not everyone's going to be happy with the outcome of this map and I appreciate the conversation that's been going on between groups no matter the differences. The fact is, though, the Willow Glen area is going to have to be adjusted and the unity map is the best way of this because it puts Willow Glen from three to two districts. It is great that this map has generated um, a lot of conversation and other maps, but I cannot good faith support the community map because it hurts the voice of renters by putting more of Willow Glen into D6 from D9 and taking this multifamily neighborhoods out of D6 and into D9. I'd also like to say there are no special interests. There's only a preservation of people's humanity. Our community should give everyone a chance to access all San Jose has to offer and homeowners of single family homes need to start thinking of renters as part of them and not have, as some people have said, not in my backyard mindset. There's going to have to be collaboration and people are going to have to work with those that come from different racial backgrounds, different ethnic backgrounds and different class backgrounds. Thank you. Jenny Choi. Good evening. Thank you, commissioners, for taking on this very difficult task of redistricting for our city. I very deeply appreciate your work. I live in the Thousand Oaks neighborhood. We are in District 9, and I hope that will not change. We have strong relationships built over time, and um, we work well with our council member's office as well as with our surrounding neighborhoods of Pinehurst, Erickson, and Tanglewood. We want to stay together as a community of interest and continue our well-forged and continually strengthening relationships within District 9. That was all I had wanted to say today, but based on what I've heard here tonight and the issues of equity that have been brought up, I will respectfully note that in a city with Asian Americans as the largest racial and ethnic group at 39% of the city's population, it is remarkable that this redistricting commission has not a single Asian American commissioner and our city has not a single Asian American city council member. 
I see this as just one example of the many equity issues we have to address together in our city. So I strongly urge the commissioners to please ask your con consultants to look not only at balancing the numbers, but to do deeper analysis of the equity part of the equation while keeping neighborhoods intact as much as possible. Thank you very much. Maria Canito. Thank you. And I Thank you, and I hope you can hear me this time. Yes. Great, Th thank you, commissioners. Uh, my name is Maria, and I'm the vice president of the Tatra Community Association located in District 9. And I'd like to thank Cher and Sonia for their presentation of the community map this evening, as well as David Knoll from Erickson for his presentation. I wholeheartedly support David's uh, comments. I appreciate the opportunity to voice my concern and to ask the commission to keep the following neighborhoods in District 9 as outlined in the community map. And those neighborhoods include Tatra, Pinehurst, Thousand Oaks, Erickson, and Tanglewood, altogether known as the Pearl, Branham, Four Corners. I ask for these neighborhoods to remain in D9, to maintain the integrity of our neighborhoods, to continue our long and trusted relationship with D9 represent, re, representatives and the D9 leadership group. To continue to address common issues facing these neighborhoods and to highlight the common pride we all celebrate together in our adjacent communities. So I strongly support the community map that would continue to keep our neighborhoods together in District 9 and I thank you for the opportunity to comment. Andrew Macias. Good evening, thank you for your time. My name is Andrew Macias and I spent the first half of my life living off Penitentiary Creek and the second half closer to Capitol and Eastridge. And I'm here to speak in support of the Unity Map today or this evening. I appreciate how it addresses the extreme inequalities I've witnessed and how it treats the east side with respect. The Unity Map ensures the Reed Hill View Airport is in the main east side district with the Alum Rock. Uh, with Alum Rock. When I was younger, uh, I'm closer to the foothills, it was very apparent that some neighborhoods were very more affluent the, uh, than others. And as I grew up listening to all the planes fly over Reed Hillview uh, and people racing up from the Mercedes dealership to Red Lobster, you realize nobody in those mobile homes are flying the planes or driving the Mercedes. I've worked at Raging Waters, I've worked at the fairgrounds, uh, I've worked at Happy Hollow, downtown San Jose on Santa Clara Street and San Pedro Square. So I've always worked with all of our community and there is a tragic amount of community and society members left falling through the cracks because the average income of the districts has such extreme outliers. Additionally, I hope in the future your outreach includes more than just Facebook and next door ads since these can ignore many of the members who I'm speaking about. Uh, especially consider, I very recently moved to the south side and next door can be extremely toxic, especially to the communities that you really want to reach out to. Um, so I hope you just kind of take this and realize why so many of us are supporting the, the unity map. Thank you so much for your time. I know you guys have a lot to consider, so I appreciate you hearing us out. Andreas Quintero. Hey everyone, uh, it's me again. So I, I really uh, appreciate the robust dialogue that's going on. This is always healthy to have, um, you know, plenty of people speak. However, as we move forward, it's important to be informed. And so if we go back and we take a look at basically the, the, the person who wrote the, the, the book on political history in San Jose, Dr. Terry Christensen, take a look at his uh, book, uh, San Jose City for All Seasons, we started looking at some of the things that happened in the past. Uh, we can notice uh, 1950 to 1975, uh, most of the council members were businessmen and attorneys. And they happened, three quarters of them happened to come from just two neighborhoods in San Jose. We're talking about a history that uh, took out and didn't allow others to have a voice in the political process. And so it required significant amount of change. It required districting, and that's exactly why you're going through this process. 
to ensure that we don't go back to those times again. What had happened as a result of that representation being consolidated into two very affluent neighborhoods, we had in uh, uh, neighborhoods in East San Jose that weren't incorporated purposely so that people wouldn't have a voice in the city. Um, it's no surprise that we wind up having the last uh, street to be paved, the last street to be paved in the entire city of San Jose, out here in East San Jose in District 7, Towers Lane. Uh, many of you probably didn't even realize that because some of you haven't come out to our neighborhoods. 2000s is when we finally had that street paved. Uh, that's That speaks to the the serious issues that were ingrained into our city that finally were dealt with. And we're talking about infrastructure. If you wanna go ahead and talk about values of a city, it's what you do with your budget and having a city, a street in East San Jose that looked like a, like a developing country. That's what it looked like without pavement up until the uh, mid 2000s. All right, thank you very much for your time. Marisol Barahona. Hello, my name is Marisol Barahona. I am a resident of the Seven Trees community, which is a community of interest in District 7. I feel that redistricting um, might bring negative outcomes and just moving the line even one street over might create negative impact on our schools, uh, especially since we have been um, working really hard to bring safety to our parks. Um, and the Seven Trees community and the Seven Trees Neighborhood um, Association has been working with the city of San Jose to activate the community center, the library and Solari Park. This takes the participation of all of the residents in District 7. So redistricting will uh, disrupt the work that we have put in for decades. Thank you for your time and I will yield the rest of my time. Andy Espinoza. Hi, my name is Andy Espinoza. I'm a member of the community here in support of the San Jose redistricting unity map and I and I want a fair map and you want a fair map. Uh, in order for us to achieve this, we need to ensure that everyone has an equal voice and opportunity. Not being for the unity map means you're not on board with voters. Sorry, <laughs> not being for the unity map means you're on board with, with voter suppression, particularly Latinx votes. That also means you're okay with displacing the displacement of us, Latinx, the Asian, Black and Indigenous community members. Please help with keeping our families and communities together. Uh, recently, I've been more involved in the last year working in the San Jose community. And right now, COVID is ravaging through our, through our communities, uh, particularly all of uh, color. And so right now, we're focusing on getting them back up. If you were to draw these lines and keep them the way they are and not support us, you're basically kicking people down. You're already kicking them while they're down. So are you gonna be perpetuating um, what our history has been doing of racist redlining? Um, right now you have the opportunity to make these next 10 years the best possible. So I want you to hear that again. Right now, you have the opportunity to make these next 10 years the best possible. Thank you so much for listening to me. Cindy Folk. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, I'm Cindy Folk. I live in the Door Association area. I'm presently on, uh, am a board member. And I would like you to consider returning the um, previous or the current boundaries of District 9 back to Kirtner Avenue, because that would keep our, our community whole. And I think you guys are doing a great job. That's all I have. Thank you. Conception Garcia. Hola, buenas noches. Mi nombre es Concepción García y soy residente de San José y estoy aquí para darle soporte al mapa de unidad donde las diversas comunidades tengan la misma igualdad en voz y en voto. 
para el beneficio de la misma. Desafortunadamente, nuestras comunidades uh, de bajos ingresos, en ellas me incluyo, eh, estamos mal representadas y por lo, por, por lo consiguiente nos encontramos con barreras que no nos permiten el acceso a muchos beneficios y que no solo perjudican a solamente a nuestras comunidades latinas, sino también a otras uh, asiáticas y, y, y las demás uh, comunidades. Yo soporto fuertemente a la comunidad del mapa para mantener a nuestras familias y a las comunidades juntas para un solo propósito, que es la igualdad para todos. Gracias por su tiempo y por su, y por su trabajo. Rita Beretta. Uh, buenas noches. Uh, yo soy residente, uh, uh, residente uh, uh, líder comunitario, promotor y, uh, de Valley Pamson, uh, al este de San José. Uh -huh. uh, estamos pidiendo uh, al consejo que no remuevan a Valley Pams del distrito 7. Ajá. A la vez, aquí este, esta área de apartamentos, somos más de, de 3,000 personas. Ajá. Y deseamos uh, continuar en el mismo distrito 7 porque uh, somos uh, una, una comunidad que está, ha luchado mucho sobre la violencia Ajá. y por las oportunidades económicas de... Ajá. Entonces, uh, hay, hemos, estamos por más de cinco años batallando sobre esto. Lo hemos abierto. Hemos, hemos abierto muchas uh, o derribado barreras que nos han detenido a uh, nuestra comunidad. Uh -huh. Y em, estamos teniendo voz uh, en, este, en, esta, en este distrito, en estas comunidades. Uh -huh. Y como muchos saben, nuestras comunidades son de bajos ingresos. Uh, y todos somos inquilinos. Entonces, uh, creemos que, desea, que nos beneficia continuar en el Distrito 7. Uh, porque... En nuestros, uh, nuestros estos, uh, nuestra comunidad necesita estar unida. Ajá. Y también porque las, uh, quizás las, hay oportunidades en otro distrito, pero deseamos que continuar aquí porque, porque también nuestra concejal nos apoya, nos, 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 nos identifica con nosotros. Ajá se identifica con la, con la comunidad. Ajá. Y uh, estamos luchando para continuar con esta unidad. Uh -huh. uh, pedimos que se nos apoye y se nos respete nuestra decisión. Ajá. A, a continuar en este mismo distrito. Ok, gracias. Mary Lou Zepeda. Hola, buenas noches, ¿me escuchan? Uh, mi nombre es Mary yes. Lou, vivo en el vecindario de Bali Pam. Mi comunidad ha construido y sostenido un poder compartido al organizarnos en torno a la seguridad del vecindario. La importancia de la comunidad es la prevención de la violencia, de los derechos de los inquilinos, inmigrantes, estudiantes, trabajadores y más. Valipam es un grupo de 
liderazgo vecinal y una asociación de vecinos que representa la voz unida de más de 300 personas que viven en el complejo de apartamentos. El, con, el, el código postal 95122 es uno de los más más poblados. La mayoría de los estudiantes de la primaria que asisten a la escuela Katherine Smith viven en Valley Pams como asociación de vecinos. Valley Pams Unidos es una parte central de nuestra comunidad. Estamos en frontera del distrito 7 y 8, lo que históricamente significa que hemos tenido una buena colaboración con las oficinas del distrito. Por esta razón, la comunidad de Valley Pams le gustaría continuar en el Distrito 7, porque seguimos luchando para que nuestra comunidad sea mejorada en diferentes áreas y que podamos tener el apoyo de ustedes. Y ojalá que esto sea posible para seguir mejorando. Gracias. Buenas noches. Jeffrey Buchanan. Hi, uh, Jeffrey Buchanan. I'll be brief uh, from Silicon Valley Rising Action. Uh, just want to address two quick, quick things. Uh, appreciation to all the folks from Thousand Oaks, Pinehurst, Erickson, uh, and the Tatra neighborhood who, who came out this evening. Um, I know a number of them uh, expressed uh, their thoughts about what match they prefer, but just want to tell those who, who may still be on the line uh, that the updated Unity map uh, does keep all of their neighborhoods together in the District 9. Um, so, so we share their concerns and, and we try to address their concerns. So hopefully that's uh, some relief for those folks who, who continue to hang on tonight. Uh, I did want to, uh, there were some questions about uh, what was I meeting when I said uh, voter suppression in District 3 and 6. And so I just want to state some data here so the commissioners have it. Uh, with the current 2011 lines, District 3 has 46. 84% Hispanic residents. Uh, the, or the community map has 39% Hispanic residents. So in fact, that is 7.84% reduction in the Hispanic population of the downtown District 3. That in fact is quite substantial. The 2011 lines in District 5 has a 58.03% Hispanic population. The community map has a 53.5% Hispanic population. That in fact is a very, very significant reduction. And so um, I'm not claiming anyone had any intentions of doing so, but that map suppresses Latino voters. Thank you so much. Sonia Lu. Hi, my name is Sonia Lu, and I was one of the individuals um, involved behind the community map. And um, I just want to state that, first off, um, we are focused on the communities and to keep all the relationships as closely as possible that we have fostered for years and decades amongst um, the neighborhoods and all the inner connections within those. Um, and uh, we unfortunately do not have the type of software program that other um, groups have. We just have what is free online, <laughs> the districting tool. And that's what, um, all of our borders perimeters are based off of. Um, we do our best to just focus on keeping the communities together. And I also want to address um, earlier on, there was a caller, Aurelia. Um, we actually had a volunteer contact her and it seems like uh, she didn't realize that individual was connected to our group. 
Um, I have, I did send out and reach out to Rita Torres. And, um, and the good news is that we are behind the scenes in communication with Aurelia and uh, she is going to help us try to get better um, response from them. And so that is a ongoing um, project and activity that we have been focused on. And our group was only involved just as of two weeks ago. So we're doing what we can for the community outreach. Thank you so much, Commissioner. Back to the chair. Thank you. And thank you very much to um, the members of the public for their um, uh, comments and thoughts. Um, and thank you for those uh, who still um, are with us, continue to be with us. Um, it is 11 o'clock. We have been going for four hours. Um, so let's take a short five minute break. Um, and then we'll come back um, to um, discuss further and um, talk about potential possible action before we adjourn for the uh, for the evening. So we'll come back at 
to uh, see if we can get the rest of the commission here. All right, well, why don't um, we go ahead and, and get started and um, hopefully they'll, they'll join us shortly um, since it's getting late here. Um, and we've got Chris from Redistricting Partners patiently waiting for, for suggestions and um, recommendations from us. Um, what I wanted to see if we could do um, with the remainder of our time tonight, um, I had three, three suggestions. The first is to see if we can uh, perhaps narrow down the uh, number of maps that we want to consider moving forward. Um, right now, I count um, I count eight um, draft maps from um, redistricting partners, and then we've had a, a handful others uh, presented by the community. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking maybe we can narrow it down and then once we've narrowed it down from there um, we can um, work with Chris um, uh, in trying to suggest new lines for him to draw on Maptitude for us tonight. Additionally um, suggestions for him on, on things we'd like to see with those um, maps that we, like, we would like to advance um, for next week. Um, I'm curious to hear um, your thoughts on on moving forward, uh, Commissioner Dilvelson. Okay, somebody has to go first. So, um, I mean, I think D and D two are very similar. So I think we can pick either or of those. Um, I think that is the most recent iteration of C three that we've had significant public support for. So. Um, I would vote for either one of those um, and spend our time tweaking those to accomplish the various and specific goals that we've received testimony on, um, including, you know, drilling. And we got to pick one so we can actually drill down and look at the statistics. And, you know, people want fair representation, and that's totally understandable. But we need to pick one so we can actually move the lines around, get happy with that and then drill down. If we need to adjust some things from there, then we'll do that, but it's gotta be a multi-layered approach. So I would submit that either one of those maps would be the place to start. Commissioner Fadum. Uh, in echoing Andrew, I, I think it appears that we've been kind of focusing in now on the D3. Um, I haven't had a full opportunity to compare it to C3, but um, I think it, it does look fairly similar. And then maybe looking at what the unity map and the community maps um, that we've heard most about <clears throat> from the public. And then I think maybe there was a neighborhood map, but then as Andrew said, maybe taking a look at the D3 map, but overlaying some of the issues that were raised. Um, I know I've been taking notes from various different uh, public members to maybe see if we can accomplish a lot of what the concerns were and what the unity map's trying to do with kind of encompassing it into maybe starting with the D3 or the, or the unity map. Thank you, Commissioner Wright. I've been very appreciative of the various presentations that we've seen from uh, various members of the public and groups that have given us plenty of food for thought in addition to the work that's being done by the city's consultant. Um, I am supportive of what uh, Andrew was saying in terms of let's narrow it down to one or two maps because I think it's also more efficient for us then to drill down and make those adjustments based on what we've heard from the community as well as from the presenters and from 
Uh, what I've heard, you know, I'm also kind of looking at uh, map D and D2 as well. Thank you. Commissioner Alvarez. I totally agree. I think that based on all the testimony that we receive from the public and I'm very proud of the fact that they've stepped forward and given their, their, uh, their counsel to us to consider that uh, we continue, we move in a direction that Andrew has pointed out. I think that's very good that we've identified at least reduce it to three maps and then take a look at all that. Then I also have several notes of people and their, their concerns, what's going on in their districts that we apply those, those, those uh, in, that input by identifying which of the maps. And I think the ones that you identified, Andrew, is a good start. Commissioner Sibri. Uh, thank you very much. I'm um, in favor of looking at uh, C3. Um, I just, uh, and um, D4. Um, I just want to make sure that uh, we won't ever get accused of not listening to, you know, the community, the citizens that feel that their plan was even better or much better than what we choose. So let's, uh, let's uh, take that in consideration and uh, in our approach of trying to make a decision on which map we want to use. Thank you. Commissioner Berrigan. Commissioner Berrigan, there's a lot of static coming from your line. We can't hear you. Can you hear me now? It's, not, it's a little bit better, but not great. D, I'm sorry, uh, this, is, this is Tony, city clerk. Your microphone was not like this before the break. Um, it's it's not necessarily static. It's it's like rapid clicking, and it's really loud. So it, it, we hear it over you. Can you, hear me now? We're, no. you might want to sign off and then come back in. Because you were fine earlier. We'll come back to you, Commissioner. Um, Commissioner Collins. Yeah, um, I, I think I'd, I'd like to work. I agree with what the commissioners are saying. I'd like to work with the unity map and the community map, uh, at least both of them, which can, in, in some ways, I think they might be mutually exclusive of each other, but I think we, you all know that the task is very hard to try to preserve neighborhoods and uh, not put lines down areas where people have been together for many years. And on the other hand, uh, preserving um, voter voices and preserving voices of, of many of our citizens who feel very disenfranchised for many decades is also important. And I, we have to balance those two things. I don't like that. It, it's a daunting task, but that's why I'd like to keep the U unity map in, in there along with what the rest of you have mentioned. Commissioner Berrigan. How about, how about uh, can you guys hear me clearly now? Yes, yeah, much better. Thank you. Um, I'd like to make a recommendation that we move forward with the C3 map uh, the D map, as well as the community map. These are my top three. Okay, so, so far I've heard, and, and I'll, I'll just say from my vantage point, the three that I would like to um, advance are C, C3, or an iteration of C3D, D2, I think those are very similar. 
um, C4 or the updated Unity map and and the community map. Um, listening to everybody, I don't know that we're at a place where we have a consensus on one. It sounds like a, C, a variation of C3 or D, D2 would be acceptable for all at this time. <clears throat> and perhaps that's that's a, a, an okay place to start for tonight. Um, Commissioner Martinez? So, sorry, I didn't weigh in. I just wanted to just weigh in on on uh, on C4 and D2. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Diddlewilson. <clears throat> if I could make a suggestion for like an affirmative action plan to consider would be to use, let's just call it, let's just say D2, just to pick one because they're very similar. So I'd say, and the reason why I would start with that is because that is the minimal change iteration that we've all been talking about now for however many weeks or months that kind of, okay, that's that gives us a good starting point. And we've made a couple adjustments, we'll make some more. And then if folks on the commission wanna see the unity map or the community map, and we can kind of overlay those things, but. I think the working foundation should probably be one of the two D maps, and I would suggest D2 just to pick one. Okay, is there any objections with starting with D2 tonight? Okay, seeing none, I'm gonna turn, uh, turn it over to Chris. If if you could help us by pulling up the D2 on Maptitude. Give me a second. I, I had D loaded, so I'm going to switch maps. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's loading now. Okay, this is D2. Um, just to get everyone's bearings, um, this is the plan that is at 9.9% um, total deviation. Um, or actually, it's, sorry, it's not 9.9. .9, it's 9. Point, yeah, 9.93% 9, 9 deviation. So we can't and District 6 and 10 are the two, 6 is the most underpopulated and 10 is the most overpopulated. So keep that in mind as we make changes. Um, so where would we like to begin? Commissioner Dillison. Yeah, I'm just gonna, can we just go down to the border of six and nine? And I'm going to try to be fairly efficient here. And then, I mean, hopefully what I suggest is kind of in line with what the commissioner from district nine is, is thinking. But so what I, what I would initially propose is that we move, we keep the line from Lincoln Avenue. You see on the kind of the Eastern side there, you see that block on Lincoln and Roy, that little yeah. block right there. Here. Yeah. So that, so where Lincoln Avenue is, if you, kind of use Husted as the southern boundary to Bookson. So between Bookson and Lincoln, Husted as a southern boundary, you kind of put that into to D6. So it, so move. Yes, that, that line there to Lincoln, right there, oh, that okay. square right there. Okay.
So that yeah. would um, move six up about a half a percent or point seven five percent. Okay, I got a few proposed moves, and then if you come basically to the western side or what southwestern right side there yeah where bagby is so see yeah. kurtner avenue those are the yeah. blocks right there below kurtner that they we had testimony on moving that back into d9 okay Before I, because my my other comments are on the northern side of D six. So before I do that, I'd be interested to hear what the District Nine Commissioner's thoughts are. If he had any proposed moves on this boundary, just trying to be efficient. Commissioner Bates, Adam. Thank you. So I think the other main concern that we had um, that we were hearing was, and I if you can uh, focus in again, was in the Southern. <clears throat> and I think what they were asking for in that one area was for the boundary to come down to It's the, the Pearl Branham Four Corners. So it's it's already unified in District Nine. Yeah, that's already yeah. that's already good. It's already it's already there. Okay. Okay, that's what I was looking for. So yeah. that that's remaining in District Nine already. Yeah, it's been got it's, it. It's in C three D and D two. Got it. So that puts. So with the addition that Andrew just suggested the movement to district six, where does that put district nine? I mean, it's a, it's one, one, one point seven percent underpopulated. So it okay. has room to grow, um, but it really can't grow north, right? With district six at its current population. Um, okay. Is, is that Southern line? Uh, Commissioner Fadim, is that more between District Six and the Northern District part of your District Nine? Is that line more and more consistent with the testimony that you're receiving? Because I know you expressed some concern about the previous line that was down to Coke Avenue. So we've right. moved that north. Is this generally consistent with what you're hearing from your district? I believe so. Okay. But I just want to take a look at. Um, I need to. Uh, focus in on it to make sure with regard to the neighborhoods what I'm looking at but it looks like it because we've, we've got the Willow Glen South is staying in nine with the Sh Schellenberger and Lincoln Glen uh, yeah thank you bring both in especially we're looking at you wanted to make it Houston coming down with Houston See, where was Houston again? That's the southern boundary line here. Right. It should be right here. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And that, I think, I don't think that breaks up too much from my notes. Okay. Um, and then I just want to, if I can, Chris, if yeah. I would just like to go and make a couple of more comments if I can. Yeah, okay. perfect. If you could move north, like into the western downtown portion of it. Yeah. So we had some testimony uh, from two of the downtown associations that they thought that moving the Deardon Station area as part of D3 would be a good idea. I'm not suggesting we do that quite yet, but I would like to get 
um, the district three commissioners thoughts on that appears to be a fairly modest expansion of D3. Um, and if she's a proponent of that, I would be interested to see what that would do. So yeah, uh, I'm, I'm up to see those changes. It, um, it, the shift, it was, I think, 773 people. Yep. Um, so it would track. This is a little bit too much. Um, but it would take in this part of um, Dearden, and then it would come down and take in this loop here. Okay. And then stop at the 280. Um, and maybe I'm, maybe it's over. I don't know. So now it's only saying maybe I actually, I think it needed this nub was the other thing. Yeah. Um, because of, I think there's a, this is where the station is, right? Like right here. Okay. Um, so that's, I think, I believe that's the, um, actually, I'm sorry. I missed a little bit right here. Okay. But, um, that's the, the, the outline that, um, from the map that was presented by, um, the downtown folks. All right. So can we, can we just do that for now? Um, and subject to more commentary from the D3 commissioner, obviously. And then can, then we go up to the, to the very Northern part of the, of D6. There's that little strip that they referred to by the new hall neighborhood here. Yeah, I just want to see what that would do to the population if we added that to D6, because it is yeah, yeah. far more contiguous if you put it into D6. Totally, because it's cut off from the airport. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so you're adding like 1,200 people. So you're going in the right direction. All right. I mean, I think in the only other substantive comment that I that I have, well, there's two. One, I mean, I don't know that I can do anything about this right now, but if other people have ideas, I'm all ears. I know that there's been some testimony in the Gardner neighborhood about wanting to be part of D3, which I think is their existing district. And I'm familiar with that area because I literally live right there, maybe 300 yards from the Gardner neighborhood. And I'm very, very familiar with that neighborhood. Take my kids to that park there. So that, that if like it's on the base, the Gardner is really on the other side of that train track right there. That's kind of like the dividing line currently, I think on the map, it's that little, yeah, that what I think they call maybe the horseshoe. Yeah. Um, so that, and then obviously the Goodyear Mastic neighborhood I mean, I've seen this on both the, the C4 map as well as the various iterations here. I mean, the Goodyear Mastic neighborhood, I don't think is traditionally a part of D6, but it's there seems to be there for population purposes. And I don't know that there really is any way to, given the number of people, I think on one map it was like 4,500 people or something like that. I don't know that there's any way to move that into D7 and try to keep the populations level. So. I just put that out there for the other commissioners' thoughts when they're maybe thinking about suggestions. So just to give you a number, yeah. um, if we wanted to move it into D7, D7, it would be fine. Um, well, it would, it would be over by 2.4%. The problem is, is that with all these shifts, D6 would then be underpopulated by almost 9%. Yeah. And it's, as you said, 4620 um, yeah. is the population change. So I think, I think that, I think the binary choice on this is, if you wanted this into D seven, then you would need to revisit the southern border, um, and move maybe, move Cherry like Unified Cherry, because this is the a nub of Cherry uh, on, under the neighborhood plan that gets split, mm -hmm. um, or I mean I think we had great testimony about leaving that, that this neighborhood. Yeah. I don't want to touch them. I mean, they share an HOA. I mean, that yeah. doesn't make any sense. So, I mean, that. it's just like it's it, some of, some of this territory probably would have to move back into D six or um, you would have to talk about, it. I don't, I mean, moving this line here um, into D three. 
Um, yeah. All right. Well, I don't, don't, I'm not suggesting we make that change. I'm just throwing it out there as something that I heard testimony on and I'm, I'm looking at. So if there are other moves, like with respect to communications Hill, if the commissioners decide they want to start messing around with that, that, you know, I'm, I'm all ears if, if that unifies the Goodyear Mastic within D7 as a result. So that's all I got Thanks. for now. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Barragan. I'd like to echo in regards to Commissioner from District 6 in regards to the Goodyear Mastic neighborhood. They're currently in District 3. However, they are split and do uh, a lot of work within District 7 as well. So I think adding them to District 7 and making them whole in District 7 would be uh, a good solution for, for Goodyear Mastic. Uh, when it comes over to Guadalupe, Washington, which is the neighborhood just north of Goodyear Mastic, uh, and if possible, the Spartan Keys neighborhood, we'd like to see what that would be like if we could expand those into District 3. move this Martin. So we can start with the good, the uh, Guadalupe, Washington neighborhood first, okay. which is uh, along the Highway 87, I believe that is. Right here? Yeah, and then go east to, I believe that is the 82. I think that's what first. And then we can expand that further. So wait, so what, what I'm wondering is you want Guadalupe, Washington, do you want just to the 87 and to the border of Goodyear it, it, it actually goes just a little past that, but then that's where it transitions into Spartan Keys, which reads Virginia and Martha, but that's Spartan Keys. Well, it's Spartan Keys, I believe, does it go all the way down? Here? So there's a, yeah, it, it does go further south, past Keys, south yeah. of Keys. So then Keys. you want south of keys road key street yes all of that there yeah so this is um gonna massively underpopulate seven okay. it's already under um it's gonna move it to over 11 percent under and move three um almost eight and a half percent over i mean i think what it looks like you're trying you're moving it towards is the current lines mm -hmm. And District 3 is one of the only overpopulated districts in its current um, like construction. Okay. So it really, I mean, it, it could move this way. Um, maybe if you wanted to move Goodyear Mastic into seven and then have District 6 come up and use the 87 as a, as a border. You might be able to do this like a three-way swap. What? Uh, I mean, this is ten. This is a movement of ten thousand people. Yeah. Okay. So let's turn the zone into like where we just moved, where the deer on that area that we just. Uh, yeah. I like. Change, I do like the changes there, with the deer dawn included in District Three. Uh, but if. I was trying to really stress on the fact that if we can at least get Guadalupe, Washington into District 3, even if we couldn't make Spartan Keys, because we do want to keep Spartan Keys as a whole as well. It would be ideal if they could stay in District 3, but I understand that this is really complex. I mean, if you want, if you wanted just to do Guadalupe, let's see what that would be. All the way up to 1st Street, which is Highway 82. Yeah. Get, let me just get in there so I can do it right. So this would be a 4,000 person shift. Um, you would, um, let's see. You would, um, District 3 would then be overpopulated by 3%. Um, so that could, could work. Then District 7 would be under by negative six. So I think you would need to move um, something into seven to replace. And then I think the likely thing would be to you would be Goodyear Mastic, but then again, 
um, you would have to do something with um, District 6 because it would be the populations would be just really unbalanced. Right. Well, good gymnastic, then we can put that into District 7 because they already work with District 7 currently. They're, they're a split neighborhood. So good year mastic in district seven, of course, with the feedback of the district seven commissioner, um, that could be an ideal solution to put it into D seven. Commissioner so Sidbury, do you have some comments? Uh, yeah, I was trying to, I wanted to know the, the population. I think Chris, I think you said, It'll be about, I'll be under? District 7, yeah, you'd be under by 6%. Under by, oh, wow. So Goodyear Mastic was 4,600 people, so that's roughly 4%. Right. 4% addition. Um, so you probably, with moving, it was almost, you would gain a slight population um, with trading um, Guadalupe for Goodyear, because it, your Guadalupe is only four, so you'd gain around 530 people um, with the shift, but then you would cause District 6 to go probably to like seven or eight percent under. Well, wow. I mean, I, I think what you're what you're what you're seeing here is every time you make a shift with the right. populations as as kind of the total deviations as as high as they are. <laughs> you have to then create another shift in you know in the districts that lo that's losing population right uh but what i was thinking about was uh how can we and that's keeping the fairgrounds and the keys and the wood wood creek yeah so i mean you still i mean i think one of your a statement was about communication hill and maybe right that yeah. diagonally and moving that this part into into seven um that would district 10 can give up population it's at 4.9 percent over so i think that would um help balance seven uh-huh that's what i was thinking yeah so i mean if you want i can do this movement of guadalupe washington I can move Goodyear Mastic and half of half of com Communications Hill. We can see where we end up. Okay, can we try that and just see real yeah. quick? do that So this would um, put seven at 2.3% 2, 2 over and 10 at 1% um, over. And uh, yeah. And I don't know if that, I believe that was the line that was discussed. Um, but tell me if you want it to go farther south. Okay. Um back here okay yeah that looks, that looks good i mean we're, we're a little over but that looks yeah i, I like that that's, that's pretty good thank you yeah chris thank you no problem Matt. Commissioner Collins, did you have comments? 
I see your hand raised. No, no. Okay, thank you. Are there any other um, comments or suggestions for this um, D2? Commissioner Devilson? Yeah, um, just for purposes of, I mean, obviously there's a significant population imbalance in District 6 right now. Um, so there's a small, I mean, District 1 looks pretty good, but if we just took that square back where, I don't know, is that Valley Fair in Santana yeah. Row? Got it. Up there, just to see what that little that little square may bring us, kind of a little closer to balance. That's, since that was, I think, in the existing D six lines. Yeah, you can see that this the pink is the current, and yeah. so yeah, you're right. And it also helps. There's this little chunk here that. Yeah. So that would move 2200 people over. Um, and so you would you get closer. You'd still be district six would still be under by 6%. Um, and if we look at all the deviations, um, it's at, like, you're actually under 10% now, because your highest deviation is 3.1. So this would be 9.88. So it would balance, it just, District 6 would be the, you know, would be 6,800 people under deviation. We need to pick up a little, a little something somewhere else, but we're closer now. Exactly. Okay. I'll circle back to you once everybody else has had a turn to weigh in here. Uh, I don't see any other hands raised, Commissioner Diddle Lucin, so go for it. Okay, cool. Um, can we go back down to the southern boundary? I think there's a little triangle right there, which could make a little cleaner line, and maybe we could pick up the last little bit that we need. Like yeah, this, it's that triangle, right? See on the Lincoln and Roy, that little triangle, like right there. Yeah. So do you like using? Yeah, just using that natural boundary, I guess, if that's possible. Yeah. We know what neighborhood that is, Chris. Um, is is there is that a neighborhood that? Let's see, I mean, I'm just gonna I'm gonna kind of turn off the. So these are the neighborhood boundaries. And here, let me just not do this for a second. So why did you go back on? Um. It looks like this is Lincoln and Roy. So that's all one. That's all one neighborhood. It's all one neighborhood. Got it. So I think coming down Lincoln Avenue is that what I see? Yeah. So this, so Lincoln Avenue looks like it splits this neighborhood. Um, right. And so it's Kurtner. I don't know what this line is. Kurtner um, along the top, and then. What is this, the 68 or something? Uh, or that, 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 that might be, is that Almaden Expressway? Yeah, yeah. Almaden or Almaden Expressway. It yeah. should be, yeah. Almaden, yeah, it, there's Almaden here. Right. Yeah. And then it splits off into the expressway. Yeah. So uh, that, yeah. Seems like, that seems like kind of easy pickings to put into one neighborhood. Okay. Yeah, because then you would unify it into six. And so that's 550 people. So it's, I mean, it's not substantial, but it's the right direction. Um, I'm interested in uh, Mr. Fadum's uh, opinion about the Canoe Garden area or if he thinks that there's some, or if there's other areas on this boundary, because I mean, this seems to be the boundary where we can move a little bit and 
bring the deviation down in a sensible way. So, yeah, but I'm also looking at we're now getting District 9's going down. So we're down, what is that, 2.28%? Okay. I'm not sure then if we went over by the Canoas, Garden, and Almaden Northern boundary. Yeah. I, that's where you're looking right yeah that's what i was yeah okay um because this is the expressway right yeah so maybe just using it as a the line yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I don't know what they pick up but that looks like there is some residential right in there it's another yeah. 400 or 500 yeah, people some, some businesses in there but uh that's yeah oh i mean brings us down under six i mean i I think that's a decent place to, to kind of start here. Okay, I'm, I think I'm good for right now. Commissioner Wright. Thank you. Uh, Chris, can you go down to District 10? I want to follow up on some input that uh, we had received from the public earlier about uh, the Glider neighborhood, and the chair may have some thoughts on this as well as the District 2 representative. Yes. I want to see what that might look like. Sure. So you've moved um, 3,100, and the the I think the hard part right now is that two is under already, and uh, you know, ten is a little up. So okay. you have so this movement would be make cause ten to be three percent or four percent over, and two would be five percent uh, um, under. Okay. I mean, technically, because six is at five and and three quarters. You, that would still technically be balanced at you'd be at 9.88 again mm. or 86 again okay um, okay all right well thanks chris there's just a yeah. relationship with uh sakamoto as well so that's what i was trying to bring them together but uh okay Commissioners, any other suggestions for Chris on this map? Me too. All right, then for for next week, Chris, would this be considered a new map or would you still yeah, label this as a D2? I mean, I think I would make it um, like D3, I guess. Just keep going up. Um, um, the other thing is, I have um, I guess the other question for next week would be, do you want like the unity map that that um, Jeffrey um, submitted and discussed elevated to a draft map? And, and or would you want the community map that was discussed um, elevated as well? And and that and to do that, I would just make it into Maptitude so that we could do the same kind of thing if you wanted to look at neighborhood lines or street lines um, and do live drawing of if if you're interested. 
Yes, I would like to see both the updated unity map and then the, the community map that was presented today in Massachusetts next week. And then Commissioner Fadem. Okay. Yeah, I'm oh, sorry. sorry. Just real quick. Yeah, quick question, Chris. Yeah. yeah. With that, is there any way of uh, doing it almost like an overlay with D3? Or yeah. do we have to do almost like a side by side? Can we kind of like so we can see where the real differences are on the lines that we were just doing? Yeah. So, I mean, like, I don't have the new Unity map loaded in this yet, in the, in this as a plan but um what i could do is pull up the old unity plan and just show you well no that's not it like uh, well here let me show you a different option so here's c4 um and it's a little bit confusing um with both of them on but what we can do is we can toggle them on and off i can just not shade c4 um Um, and so you, what you, you can start seeing is where let me turn these off too. So you can see, like, if, I think if we zoom into a, one of the districts, like let's, let's zoom into to nine. Um, you can see that this blue line is the is shifts district nine kind of north right because this is the the line for c not for d9 so it comes up and basically would have like bagby willow yale cherry the willows um come south um take in pinehurst and gunderson vista park and then down to um, hammer and then you know this portion of the city um, and so we can do the same kind of thing with the other plans like the unity map and the community map we can have bring those up and compare them to this new d3 next next time that, that's really helpful yeah thank you no problem All right, Chris, thank you very much. Look forward to seeing um, that work for next for next week. So then I think that uh, we've we've got some we're closer to making changes to the maps and and have some more direction for next week. Um, Commissioner Alvarez, before we move on, I see you have your hand raised. Yes. Um, considering the discussion that we heard from them in terms of their their concern about having equity in their voting by the districts, would we be able to look at the numbers in terms of what their 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 concern about being able to actually have representation by their by their minority groups? I know it's going to take time, but what, can we begin to look at how those numbers would play out for that for for those maps? Because I think that was the biggest point they're making. That's why they con constructed this unity map. Um. So I think one thing we can show. Well, here let me just show what's already what's built in. Um, you can see. Here, let me move this so you can actually see the data field. Um, but so this is, these are the, so the citizen voting age population, um, is what mm -hmm. we use, right. To comply with the federal voting rights act. Mm -hmm. So we can do comparisons, um, of the unity and the community map and this D3 map. Okay. Um, and it'll, that'll be in the packets that, that are, uh, that come out. And so that second page with each of the plans, we'll have every district's 
population numbers and the citizen voting age population numbers. So okay. we can co compare and contrast. And um, we could also put together a chart basically analyzing the differences between the different districts. Um, I started doing that for the unity plan and for the, the, the D, the plan D. Um, and I think it, it's a quite, it, it, sometimes it comes down to a question of, do you want a higher number in fewer districts of, of a, an ethnic group? Or do you want more of a distribution a distribution throughout the city so that there's more opportunity there's more opportunity districts? Well, I think I think we consider that, but I think looking at their strategy of how they put together their unity map and how they saw the distribution of voting that they they perceive as would be beneficial, kind of going along those lines to see how how different are we from what they what they're what they're trying to do. No, I it's, and I, and I think the other thing that's really important to just to keep in mind is one of the, the tenets of the Federal Voting Rights Act is that race cannot be a predominant factor when you're mm -hmm. drawing district lines. No, so no. you have to have um, other ways of describing why you're moving lines, um, talking about neighborhood lines, talking about community, um, unity between different neighborhoods working together on certain projects you know socioeconomic or other um other descript demographic descriptions of what unites areas of the city together to draw a line that that is a much um better way of describing movements on in the map and changes in on on the borders um i think if you if the sole focus is is like citizen voting age population or um or census ethnic population then you're getting very close to kind of breaking and okay but the, thing, the federal voting rights act i totally understand that but i also understand the arguments that were made you know that's how we got redlining in there so there is a balance a very fine balance that we need to work with and that's all I'm saying. No, no, I, I, I just want to try to counsel um, the, when you're describing movements to use neighborhoods and, and major streets and, and cultural, some things that bind um, areas together. Um, and you'll, it'll just be a much easier discussion. Okay, no, it's fine. With that in mind. Commissioner Dental Wilson? Yeah, I just wanted to echo what Commissioner Alvarez was saying. I mean, I think the point is, is that if there are maybe more than one move that we could make that perhaps considering the various neighborhoods and what impact that may have between moves would be an appropriate thing to consider if that situation arises. So it's good to have the data to be able to analyze it. All right, thank you uh, very much, Chris. Um, moving on to uh, item six, old business. There is uh, no new or old business tonight, so we can move on to item eight, meeting schedule and agenda items. City Clerk, would you like to address um, the meeting schedule? Yeah, I'm going to share um, what I have. I'm, I, Jonathan, I think is the only one I didn't get um, on the doodle, at least by the time I took this screenshot. So there's no like great day to schedule special meetings, but I did, it looks like I picked 2.30 to 7, and these were not the times that I originally picked. I don't know what happened there, um, unless I maybe picked the wrong time zone. Um, so I thought it, it would be good to know should we hold all of these dates? And if so, what start time? Um, 5.30 would be a, could be a start time. Um, I know Thursdays, you know, we have seven to a, for a reason, but if it's other days of the week, then um, 
if it's other days of the week, we might be able to start at 5.30. So, but the, these are the days I can make it for all of these. Um, and the 17th is the last day possible. The 8th is a Monday. So we have a Monday, the 10th is Wednesday, the 11th is a holiday, the 12th is Friday. A 5.30 start time would be okay with me. I would prefer probably six. Okay. Does six work for everybody? Uh, I was just gonna say, yeah, 5.30 or six to work great for me. Either that, one. Yeah, that would work fine, either one. Same here. Me too. Same here. So you want me to schedule all of those days starting at 6 p.m.? No, no, please don't do that. <laughs> no. What, no. What days? No, I, I've, I have conflicts on every day except the two days I listed. I have work okay. positions and things that are not movable, so. Okay. And I, frankly, I don't think we need that reserve that many days when I don't think we're that far away. So yeah, I think we're okay. close. I, I agree. Uh -huh. So the 10th and the 17th? That, that would be my strong preference. I'm out of town set, uh, November 7 to, to 11. Just so you know. Can you tell me what? I think we can lock in the 17th. Like we got yeah, with the 17th, we, we can lock in. We've got that one. If we could start at six, since everybody seems like that's okay, that would be an accommodation for myself. It sounds like Anadina would be work better for her too. So let's see the dates. Yeah. Yeah, that would work. I was wondering, it seemed like between the 17th and the 10th was were the most popular. Um, I would not be just, able to. Could we just do the one meeting, the one extra meeting as, as opposed to scheduling two right now? Which are we doing the 10th? Well, you, you, you can, we can talk about it again next week on the 4th. Um, yeah, on the, at the end of the conversation on the 4th, you may have a better idea of like, no, we're ready to go. Like we're, we're, we're good. I don't, I, I'm, concerned if we only do the 17th that's it that's your final day you have to approve whatever it is you've got mm -hmm. so we need one more day just in case yeah so uh, that's why i would suggest um the eighth well in any one of those three days eighth tenth or twelfth um even if we miss somebody in there here we go with yeah. the it would be, it looks like Andrew has got the one and he has the more difficult schedule. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have three very small children at home too. So this is a pretty significant lift personally outside of my work schedule. So to block off that many days at nighttime, that's a... Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, just yeah, three three kids under four and a four month old, so... Oh, so, yeah, and I'm sure that's... Got a lot of my time. wife is a superhero, so I, and I'm trying to stay in her good graces. So any accommodations that can be made, I very much appreciate it. So... BJ, just, do you have any suggestions? Yeah, I just wanted to say on the 10th, I'm having a surgical procedure, so I would be under anesthesia still that evening. I don't think I would be very good in the meeting. Okay, we can do the eighth. You want to do the eighth at six o'clock? I mean, I'll, I'll do That's it fine. as best I can. Okay. Yeah, uh, the eighth is fine. The eighth and the seventeenth. Right. Okay. And and Tony, we can vacate one or both of those if for some reason right. we make considerable progress on the fourth, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. yeah. I just wanted to to hold the dates. Okay. The the website does um, note. You know, the fourth is the last regular meeting, but other special meetings may be, may be added. So we'll go ahead and put on there a note about the eighth and the 17th, um, but, you know, maybe canceled if not needed. Uh, 
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stop share. And we will need to take public comment on that and then we need to do open forum. Yes. Um, all right. If there are any members of the public wishing to address this meeting schedule item, um, please raise your hand and um, the clerk will call on you. Wolfram Schneider. Hi, dear commissioners. I was actually presenting earlier the uh, downtown map, and I definitely appreciate that you considered, you know, adding Diridon Station and getting rid of this little knot uh, underneath the airport. I did a lot of analysis about, you know, how can we include, you know, the neighborhoods down or south of 280, and I'm happy to discuss this with uh, Commissioner Berrigan if she is interested in because I did a lot of analysis and I can share, you know, what I, what my findings were. Thank you. Mary Bitter. Yes, I just wanted to like to make sure that the uh, last date for public um, comment or public uh, participation is on the 4th and then the others are just potential additional dates if needed. Is that correct? Um, it's correct in the sense of public comment to the redistricting commission. Um, the pub, the city council will hold three public hearings as well. Okay, thank you. Share. Hi, yes, I wanna thank you for considering adding in the extra meetings. And one thing I would like to point out is that, you know, we did lose five days with the C3 map not being correct on there. Um, and also, I, I expressed interest today in having the penitentiary um, all complete in District 4. And I think it's very unfair that the C3, the D, and the D2 maps all have half of penitentia in District 5. But the Unity map and the C4 have penitentia uh, completely in District 4. So that gives a very dis um, unfair disadvantage to the people with the community map. Because if our map is going to keep half of Penitentia Creek in District 5, and we have already gotten feedback from the D4 commissioner that it's that the one most important thing is to have all of Penitentia Creek in District 4. But we just reviewed the D2 map and all of and Penitentia Creek, which I asked to look at, is still halfway in. District 5. So that means we will never get acceptance from District 4 in our having our map accepted, the, the C3 or the community map, because it doesn't meet their requirement and the main thing they wanted. So I feel like I don't know why we're being treated unfairly in that respect and that that can't be considered. It just eliminates our map as far as anybody in District 4 is concerned and I don't I think that's very unfair and I don't know why it couldn't be looked at tonight that was the one thing that that was like the main thing that I asked for I don't understand it's not fair thank you Blair Beekman hi uh, Blair Beekman here um as um uh, b before you have your uh, next meeting, public meeting scheduled, there were a lot of concerns about accessibility issues tonight. Um, I, you know, in, in doing this work for a number of years now, I, I imagine that you have answered some questions of accessibility and you've, you've done some work. Good luck. Uh, what can be better accessibility at this time? Uh, I know uh, unity groups are going to be trying to reach out to people at this time. Uh, I suppose many of the groups with the different maps will be trying to reach out to different neighborhood associations. So um, just good luck to the ideas of uh, whatever can be accessibility in the next few weeks. Uh, good luck to those efforts. Thank you. Back to the chair. Thank you. And just a reminder, the next redistricting commission meeting will be next week, November 4th at seven o'clock PM via Zoom. Next item nine, public comment, open forum. This is the time for public comment on items that are not on the agenda. The Brown Act prohibits the commission from discussing any item that is not agendized. Each speaker will be given two minutes. 
Um, if you uh, would like to uh, give public comment, please raise your hand and the clerk will call on you. Can the clerk please call any public speakers? Yes, and I would like to remind that this is for things not on the agenda. Um, it's not a time to talk again about the maps that were already on the agenda. So this is items unrelated to mapping. David Knoll. Hi, yeah, I wanted to throw out a suggestion um, regarding uh, in the disenfranch disenfranchisement, you know, that we're hearing a lot about. Um, maybe 15 years ago, the city had a big program called Strong Neighborhoods Initiative, SNI, and perhaps the commission in their debrief to the council could That's recommend it. something like that, because I'm envisioning where um, the strong neighborhoods or the neighborhoods that are organized could um, basically mentor the neighborhoods who are not organized. And I'm not really convinced that just changing district boundaries makes a neighborhood automatically more enfranchised or, or more active. Uh, you know, okay. building a neighborhood association is a lot of work. But I'm just thinking that maybe there could be a, uh, a recommendation where the city thinks about something along the equity lines there in the next budget cycle to create a program like the Strong Neighborhoods Initiative to help balance the, the issues that we've been hearing. So that's, that's all I have. So. Thank you, Blair Beekman. Hi, um, I, I suppose you can stop me if, I, if my words seem to be drifting into what you don't want to hear at this time. But I, you know, to offer first, uh, it was very nicely offered tonight, uh, you know, the concepts of, uh, you know, in, in, in um, creating redistricting maps, you, you have to consider uh, racial issues and you can't overuse them, you can't over rely on them. But at the same time, those issues may have to be addressed, which I think is what was trying to be asked with the community maps. And I, I just hope we can make those efforts to ask those questions uh, in, in, you know, the, the uh, slight adjustments that can be made with the community maps. Um, I, 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 boy, I just, I don't know what to say. Uh, I, I am very concerned about uh, the the Seven Trees area where there's a current uh, mixing of, of of different districts. It's been a wonderful balance over the years. It's created some really interesting uh, uh, culture and 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 in that area. Good luck how to uh, keep that sensitivity for that area. Um, what else is there to ask uh, ask about? Um, sorry about my uh, words tonight. Uh, it, it, my words seemed a little flaky, uh, you know, and I'm a bit out of it. But uh, they had a good heart, and I, I hope they could be seen in, as a creative way. I, I believe uh, the Four Corners idea should really be up by the Gardner area, and, and that's where we talk about the Four Corners of, of different districts connecting around the Gardner area and Google Village area in the future. And, and good luck how we all can make strides to. Uh, connect and, and trust each other where we're trying to come from, you know, with, with good studies, good practices, and, uh, you know, we're all trying to, to work the best for our local neighborhoods that we've all been around for a number of years now, and uh, good luck to the efforts of everybody to make good connections with each other. Thank you. Night. Right. Cher? Hi, yeah, I would just like to address the aspect of race. I was glad to hear that race cannot be the number one priority driving factor in this process. That was good to know. And I would like to say San Jose is 38% Asian, 31% Hispanic, 27% white. So we have a majority minority of Asian, Hispanic, and black, and we have a minority majority of white people. Um, we don't have representation on council, yet we've got, uh, for Asians, yet we have 45% Hispanic representation on the council. Um, I'd also like to say, as far as the comments about um, um, uh, this being voter suppression, the uh, three districts in question, there was no change in the white population in those districts. The only thing is Hispanic went up in District 7 quite a bit and down in two, but the Asian went up. So there's some balancing act that's trying to go on between Asians and Hispanics, okay? And I don't know if they're suppressing each other or they're just trying to say, okay, they want to balance each other. I don't know what it is, but this idea of this voter suppression, I would like somebody to, to, 
say, who is it all coming from? Because there's just all these insinuations and things, and it's just not true, you know. And I think that um, that that we need to the, the the process needs to get fo refocused on something else besides that, and the truth needs to be told about what the numbers really are instead of people just calling in saying, I support this, I support that, because this is redlining, because this is that. And they haven't even looked at the numbers and they don't even know what they're talking about. They're just, somebody just says, oh, call in and say this, say support that, you know? And so I think people really need to take that into consideration when they're making decisions about things. Thank you all very much for staying up so late. Thank you. Sonia Liu. Hi, uh, thank you commissioners for staying up so late. Um, but I just wanted to um, point out that um, the recent maps, uh, the D and the D2 was just uploaded at midnight. And it was not a map that um, community members could use. It was just a HTML um, file. And I think it would be incredibly helpful for the community and for other members um, that don't have a professional tool to be given adequate amount number of days to at least have an opportunity to be able to use a map that is going to be um, shown before at like at the commissioner's meeting not just like the midnight the day before and um and in regards to the uh the type of files that are presented, um, it would be great if they were actually a district or tool file, or at least provide us a number to that file so that we can work with that file. Because right now, what's being posted is not something that gives us ample enough time, in my opinion, to be able to properly address what will be happening at this meeting. So we just would appreciate if we were allowed at least a few days advance publication along with the district or file that is something that the community can work with. Thank you. Eddie. Hello. Um, yeah, uh, thank you very much. And thank you for staying up so late. I was, uh, I was echoing the comments by the previous speaker. I wanted to know how soon the latest file that uh, you kind of worked on, we made some slight modifications that you will use as a baseline to compare um, with a community map and the new map will be uh, posted and available. And would like to make sure that uh, the community is given enough time to be able to clearly uh, locate it um, to be able to be, come, to be prepared to contribute in a positive way. Thank you. Alex Shore. Good evening or good morning. My name is Alex Shore. I'm speaking today just as a community member, not on behalf of any organization for which I work or commission on which I sit. I do know that we have a couple commissions in our city without Asian representation. And I bring that up just because I feel like everyone deserves to have a city government that they feel represents them. And when we have such a, a large Asian population in our city, it is disconcerting to say the least that we have commissions and we have a city council without a single person who identifies as Asian or Asian American. So as you all are going through your decisions, I hope you continue to think about how to create a city where everyone feels that they can be represented in their commissions and their council. And I thank you so much for that consideration. Back to the chair. All right. Uh, before we adjourn, I just want to thank again um, the members of the public for their input and contribution tonight. and. Uh, to uh, my fellow commissioners for um, pushing through another long evening uh, to 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 move our directive in 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 the right direction. So thank you everybody. Have a good night, and this meeting is now adjourned.